Пошли. Все вместе. Какие ваши доказательства? Кокаином. We have yeah, yeah. Eric Adams Killer here today. <laughs> we have the new mayor of New York City right here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's how the, the rules work, right? You're now the yeah, mayor of New York. Congratulations. You defeated him. Yeah. You get to assume that position. Well, it's <laughs> silly. Thank you. Uh, Ole, how have you been? I'm good. I'm 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 good. I'm I'm working to death. I have I have all I I turned thirty and developed a bunch of health problems. I swear to you. And I like every day is something like I I literally I, I get up yesterday. I have a heart monitor now to my boyfriend. Like no. look at this, this oh sex. No. <laughs> uh, but it, they're they're monitoring. They're figuring it out. I have a I have an autoimmune disorder that's whooping my ass. And now they're trying to figure out what's wrong with my heart. But outside of that, outside of that, everything is great. Everything is really great. This is this has got to be gonna... like the the New York City version of Havana syndrome or something. Mayor <laughs> Adams has targeted you, and you're now feeling <laughs> sick. You're not under the weather. They can't figure out what it is. They've trapped you up to this thing. It's got to be what's going on. No, definitely, absolutely. Oh, look at this! So NYPD is doing some sort of L rad, new L rad. Oh, oh, they're on my ass. Oh, NYPD is I on my it. ass. Those they're... tweets were insane so the next day i was like um you know here's the issue the only issue for me right is like the more that they lose in the court of public opinion and, and they're getting ratioed and shit i'm just like are these fools gonna retaliate um because they're going out of their way to try to alert every precinct to me and you know i live in a black neighborhood which means my neighborhood is littered with police so now i'm just like Mm -hmm. I need to change my hair. Do I do I wear a hat? <laughs> like... I, yeah, at least until like That's the so publicity up. dies down. Because like you were you were blowing up after that interview was published. And let me just say really quick, LOL to all the people who thought that Ole wasn't gonna go ham on him because she was smiling in the picture. Oh, you the all look so with, stupid. With that photo? Yeah, yeah, ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I, like I was, you. I mean, if, if, I, if him. I was to if I was to guess after seeing that photo the first time before I saw the interview and I saw that photo of Ole with Eric Adams, my my first guess would have been. Oh wow, Ole joined the administration. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, no. It, it actually blew the new me. chief of like, police. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, damn, I didn't even know my haters didn't like me on this kind of level. Because really, like, well, why would you assume this? I was like, y'all know I'm like a defense attorney, right? Like, I cross cops. That's I, I, yeah. I don't get it. I was like, y'all a lot, especially because so much of my following. Are people who followed me because of viral moments on rising i was like it's not rising was it not you seeing me argue with a right-wing person like <laughs> and, and i don't even dislike robbie we've been to lunch you know what i mean and, <laughs> <laughs> so i was i was i was like okay i'll have zero faith in me it was actually you know, there were people saying there was this comment um where someone was like they were like oh i bet you would have gone to dinner with him after this is y'all so-called movement lawyer i was like ain't that some shit 
The bitch can't even. I smell don't think pork. he would have gone for dinner with you. I, I I think he was so terrified. He had to go to church, didn't he? After, I heard, he had to, I, I, he I had heard, to find I actually Jesus. Heard that, <laughs> I actually heard that Mayor Adams invited Ole afterwards to sushi with the boys. He, he, the ah, sushi with the boys. <laughs> yeah. He did text. He did text me, but that is the extent of of mm. any of our communication. He texts me after the interview. That is. So actually, let, let me ask you, actually, because I've been I've been dying to know this, actually. I we have a lot of questions, Ole. So. <laughs> OK, but but so so you're you're in there. You, you guys do the, the interview and I'm sure we'll 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 go back and talk about some stuff. But I got to know, what was it like when the show was over? Cameras were off. What did he say to you? What did he do? How did this, how, how did you leave? How did you exit the building oh, unscathed by the NY? Like, how did you not walk out in cuffs? <laughs> First of all, his team was sitting behind me looking stressed. That was kind of a nice barometer for me of how the interview was going. Like, I looked behind me and they would, like, this one, the one guy that was a, there was a white guy, a Latina guy, and a black guy. The Latino guy was smiling. The black guy was like this. <laughs> and the white guy was like this. <laughs> and then he's, he's trying to wrap it up from behind like like we like, have more questions <laughs> how, um, okay, how did can, the... can i ask how it even came about like how, yeah how that's what i wanted to know how, how yeah, did, did you end know, up in did the they room? know you were going to be there yeah how, how I, do they don't do background on this i don't know what they know i know this was this is so what happened was maybe the weekend before or like the week before they had had Candace Owens on the Breakfast Club, which I criticized the Breakfast Club for on um, on social media. And so Charlotte Bain called me up in the middle of dinner, like, "What's up, Queen? Let me have it. What's what's, what's the problem?" So I spent like forty five minutes telling Charlotte Bain why I thought that was bad. This is the next thing, yada yada yada. We have a difference of opinion on this. Um, and so anyway, Charlotte Bain was like, "Oh, you should come on the Breakfast Club next week." And so I'm like, "All right, cool, great, like whatever." And then like maybe Tuesday, so the interview was on Thursday. So on Tuesday we had I we. Tuesday, I'm trying to confirm whether or not this is still happening. It's happening this week. And Charlemagne tells me, oh, we're trying to have you in with the mayor. I was like, the mayor who? Eric Adams? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, yeah. I was like, let me explain something to you. There is absolutely no way on earth that Eric Adams or anybody in his administration allows that to happen. Like, there is no mm -hmm. way. That's I was I like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do it. If it's whatever. But ain't no fucking way. Ain't no way. I was sure... So I found out, so I found out like late Tuesday and, and the interview was Thursday morning. Um, and I, but I didn't find out I was doing the interview until before, like outside of the room. I thought I was, I was, I, they were like, you're going to be in there with them. I thought I was going to be being interviewed or whatever with him. So I didn't know that I would be conducting it or anything. So it isn't some long, like, we like, oh, you're so prepared. I'm like, you know, like he, like he, he wasn't set up. No one was, I was just responding to him. Like. <laughs> That's what happened. And and did did the team not do any background check or anything? Did they not yeah. like do you once? Because because like you're probably oh. one of the most vocal critics of Eric. Oh, I didn't see her uh, uh, worst mayor yeah. in the world video. Apparently, oh, yeah. <laughs> I there. I don't know what 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 Mayor Adams knows as far as um. I think in the New York Times article piece today, um, Charlemagne said he didn't know, but Mayor Adams Eric Adams wouldn't admit to not knowing. Like when at the pressers, mm -hmm. they were like. Because I, I think his his ego is offended at the premise. The premise is like of, of the journalist being like, oh, surely you would have known better than to think you could do that if you knew. And so he was like, so they asked him, did they ask him, That's did true, you know? that's bad too. Yeah, so he doesn't like that. So they asked him, did you know or did you get punked? And he was like, he was like, I didn't need to know who was going to be there. I'll debate anybody. I ain't no punk. Uh, so, he, so that's his, that's wow. been his position thus far. He's um, not used to hearing actual pushback. That that's what yeah. it is. Yeah. Like he he was taking. I, I, I don't think they expected any pushback like that because they never get that right. Like that's yeah. it took him off guard. Oh, he's never got anything like. I no, mean, honestly, never. not even just Eric Adams. I don't know if I've Most ever seen any journalist with access like that at that at, at any given moment, whether it's regular access or a moment that Ole had where just everything came together for that one moment. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think I've ever seen any journalists with that access press a, a, a politician like that ever. You, 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 I mean, that interview should go down in history. Honestly, every, 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 every college that teaches a, even a single journalism class 
mm. should be showing that video on how to conduct an interview with a politician. I agree. I mean, yeah, seriously, it should, it should come I mean, right after if, Frost. If Nixon. I didn't know it should anybody, be like Frost if I wasn't Nixon, with, and then right now, you weren't telling me this. Oh, I'm sorry. If you weren't telling me the story, I would have assumed that like they had him sit down, and then right before the camera started rolling and the show was ready to go. They open the door. You walked yeah, out, and Mayor, Mayor, Mayor Adams goes, "Oh no, Ole! What a fucking nightmare!" <laughs> there was, I will say, there was some awareness. There was, it was floated that there's a world where he sees me and leaves immediately. So the cameras were, in fact, already rolling. Oh, like mm. like, it, it, like he walked in, and the interview was, it was like less. There can be no pause, like, you know. Um, <laughs> so. My favorite part was when, like, when you first started to press him, Charlemagne was like, listen to your time there. It's going to be a long interview because he not only did not expect to be challenged, but for that long. And let me just say, for me, it was an emotional roller coaster in the sense that there was a moment where I actually started to feel bad for him because he was trembling. Like, he was opening up his water. He was like shaking I'm like oh my god Make like eye contact That's for somebody who has anxiety just, like i feel that the whole time just like Help. but then <laughs> i was enraged when he turned his back and started talking just to Charlemagne and just this, yeah. that pissed me off. Then I'm like, okay, make him tremble more. Go for it, <laughs> go for the throat. Cause it's just so disrespectful because he couldn't, everything you were saying was 100% factual. So all he could do was say, no, and so he just, he couldn't take it. So he just, nope, she's not here. La 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 la. It just, it, it was masterful and so devastating for him. <laughs> Listen, you know, you love you you love to see it. You know, he actually started the interview with his back turned to me. He only turned his mm -hmm. back to me when Charlemagne like forced it like Mayor align me. Like, um, so if he definitely so he definitely knew I don't he don't I don't believe he knew I was gonna be conducting the interview. Um, I don't know what he knows definitively, but that's what I, I think I um but he definitely knows who I am because if you notice he sees me in the room, he sits, the interview starts, he's turned away from me immediately. He's talking to Charlemagne and he starts trying to ingratiate himself with Charlemagne by presenting being like, Hey brother, we're both people that get hated on on the internet by these people in social media that can paint an image of you and they don't know it. it's all like shots at me. The whole that whole of first monologue is like Come on, brother. Fuck them. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so he definitely, he definitely knew I was. And that's why, you know, eventually, by the time he gets upset, it goes from Sister Queen and all of that to, to, we have a, you far leftist. We have a philosophical difference. I know you yeah, then, then you were Antifa. <laughs> then, then I, I was right like, away. it's very clear you've watched, it, you've watched that. And I, I don't know why. Like, like, I'm like, I don't know why you would sat down and watch two hours about your true self to upset yourself, but also. <laughs> I, I looked yeah. at the comments, Ole. Literally every single one was like positive. And my favorite one was like, he's still peeling it back after that interview. Because <laughs> <So. laughs> that was how you buy time when it is. Oh, let, let, let's let's peel it back. Let's let's take it down. Let's piece it. I'm like, sir, you're trying to try and find time to think. <laughs> um, yeah, every time I, you, you, I, I you directly say, there's, like there's a bunch asked of him moments. anything that would it, that would like push him on something, it's he's got to peel it back. And then he like tries to change change the topic while he's peeling it back so he never directly answers what you're asking like every like the, the tactic is so clear and then once you're like catching on to him and, and you're keep pressing him that's when he just tries to push out of the conversation like he he really did not he had no way to like he, he's clearly as i discussed earlier never been, been pressed like this because he didn't he didn't know what to do like it, it's it's wild to see a politician in a situation like that where they know they're full of shit and they can't get away with it this time. He tried to, he <laughs> like to see there. him just like, he, he, you know, he he's like, try everything. Smear tactic. Well, I was like, yeah. he's, he's doing the politician thing where he's trying to reset and recalibrate the conversation because he doesn't have like moral mm -hmm. standing the way that like, obviously you're yeah. decimating him with like nonstop facts related to that. And then he started doing that whole like, oh, well, I mean, do you not care about slain officers? And you called him out in real time. You're like, this trick doesn't work. I'm like, you have no power here. <laughs> you know, that was like, that's amazing. Yeah. That, <laughs> that moment, that moment where you bring up, there's a bunch of moments but off of this one i was thinking that moment where you bring up um you know he's like oh i've been to i i've been to rikers i've gone to rikers more than any uh mayor and you were like yeah the last time you were there was when um three people were killed there and uh because the uh the corrections officers left their posts and then uh you immediately went you stand with the correction officers. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> he's going for it. He's trying. Because he had no answer yeah. for that. 
he yeah. had no answer because he was all proud about how much he goes to like that he goes to Rikers and you said <laughs> yeah but what you go but this is what you go to Rikers for yeah and he was like oh shit and the way you delivered mm -hmm. that line too is just so like that was so perfect like <laughs> you said that you're like yeah I know you go to Rikers like, <laughs> just, like after you had laid out why he went there it was just so it was so good it was so sweet yeah the reason why it was so devastating was because like when politicians try to get out of these things they'll be vague right like oh I went to Rikers so you just automatically assume that he went there for positive reasons because he yeah. was sympathetic towards the people but you had such specific a positive answers reason for and a citations that he Rikers, couldn't though? get out of it i i really, I I really say, sorry the it's i'm sorry it's delayed for me I, I don't know why i'm hearing you guys late so if i'm interrupting i'm sorry no, go bender um, okay. i was i was gonna say a it's positive reason for, for mayor adams to be at rikers though would be for him to be having an extended stay there himself You're right <laughs> <Honestly>. it's, <laughs> it's it is so funny the irony of seeing somebody up there trying to push for a world where it's harder for people to accuse be uh who are accused of crimes or anything while I mean, actively under multiple investigations his damn self. And then simultaneously mm -hmm. trying to present himself like he's one hand trying to be the top cop of the interview, then also be like, I hang with my gang members. Like, I'd be, okay. I'd be, with, the, I'd be with the criminals. <laughs> like, okay. What the fuck was that? That was like, so. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like let him talk like let allow him to go in these monologues because they're so fucking telling because what are you what are you saying like you're into, you're you're against like you're actively trying to push for incarceration and over policing even though in your own monologue you're saying that oh there's barely any crime it's just to make people feel safer then you're saying oh i've talked to all these people at rikers and all of them um have have mental health issues or or dyslexia or whatever whatever i'm like so you're so you understand the problem with using the criminal system for people having issues. I was like, just let this man talk. Like, this is excellent. Mm -hmm. Let him say, let him do his monologue. I'm going to go back right back to what the fuck and tie in whatever it is you just said. When, when he was starting out talking about how much safer the New York subway system was, is that it was that the moment that you knew? Like, like how can someone both boast about how safe it is and at the same time be putting so many cops or like National Guardsmen, even though I know he didn't personally put the National Guard there, he likes to use, you know, the defense. It wasn't me personally, but like, yeah. was 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 that really like, that's that's the entry point. This is where we're going to start. Honestly, it was just like, yeah, he was he was talking. Like I like I let him talk. I'm listening to him and I'm just I think my my first question was just, okay, you say that this is the case about New York City, but you also do this. How do you reconcile that? That was my question. Like he could have tried to reconcile that. Instead, he just immediately like <gasps> Like, <laughs> push back <laughs> what <laughs> like, i'm like this is really not even the craziest question like i like that's legitimate are you i'm like everybody in new york city knows you are the king of crime crime the subways is gotham that's you <laughs> yeah but can you quote him? did you quote him though you have to quote him. <laughs> right yeah that's the, the push back and that's him hoping, find that's some him quotes. hoping to distract you like like he's hoping to distract you on a side yeah. mission like please sir spare me but he did it. He, he did it all throughout the interview, like all throughout the interview. He was simultaneously, oh, it's the safest big city. But also they these far leftists want to have people on your stoop crime the subway, blah, blah, blah. Oh. Shoplifting all that. Yeah. He like had a whole list. Yeah. And then you were really... like, this is exactly the rhetoric that I'm talking about. And <laughs> yeah, I think it's funny a. how many, how many <laughs> anecdotes, how many anecdotes he dropped, like how many stories without, um, like never telling you any names, just conveniently. Oh, I was with a uh, a baby who was shot. I was I saw this homeless person saying they want to go on the spaceship. Just story after story with no. When that happened, Mayor? Who who saw that? Where where was it? Where are the names of these people? Nothing. Meanwhile, I'm telling him what the federal monitor saying. He's like, la 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 la. Fake make believe. Fake <laughs> news. Mm -hmm. Like he might as well have just said fake news. <laughs> yeah, very Trumpian. Yes, I I like that it's been the Post and Fox and one Republican city council member defending him because it really says what he is. And yeah. like your, yes. what is it? Woke, woke uh, anti-SJW advocate or something. I kept mm -hmm. seeing all the woke different lawyer. headlines. Like, how, the, how are they going to spend? You know what really sucked about that is the one little crumb that he basically gives the right-wing press, which is that, does she care about the death of police officers? That's what they used. Like, I was like, the exact thing. That I, they and that's what I, but with, I knew, you know? I knew that was what he was doing. It was a dog whistle in real time. That was what he was doing mm -hmm. when he said it in the interview. He goes, I don't want to take you out of context and then proceeds to give you he's creating that's what it was yeah, he's no trying time. to distract it the 
minute we got out of that interview, his people called up the post. It's they called up the post, didn't you see? And then the post did that, and then immediately they start covering crime in the Bahamas. What the fuck? What this crime in the Bahamas? How the New York? Okay, we we interesting. You think we I didn't even know mean? that? Like what wow. like, <laughs> that's Literally. amazing. Oh my god. Yeah, so that didn't bother me none. Like I see NYPD and 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 the post in those places trying to do that, but like people say racist things about me on the internet all day, every day. That's one and two. Like it just looks. I'm just like you're just drawing more attention to this interview, and you're just making it look like you're making you making your boys loss look that even you know even worse because it makes it very clear. If you thought he won, you wouldn't be doing all this now, would you? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. and it's like yeah I, and i'm not running for political office it's only like if i were if i were running uh, like on the democrat ticket or something it's only them that have the struggle of like oh how do i simultaneously try to you know stand with the left on recognizing the injustices of police while also i have to pretend like i love my law enforcement officers in blue i'm not running for nobody's office i'm i hope i'm like i've been said abolished the police i don't know i was like i thought i told y'all where i stood you're like, I, okay. <laughs> like, I've never been a friend of NYBD. Like, okay. Like, yeah. Like, you're not hurting me none with that. Like, like, oh, woke lawyer. I'm like, you know, it's funny because, like, an effect of racism is to try to make you feel like have a complex about about the things that you have you've created to recognize like a racist structure it's like being woke is something black people came up with as a, as a positive thing speaking to consciousness and anything like that you're not going to shame me by calling me a woke lawyer Ooh, because in your <laughs> mind you're using woke and dei to be the n-word and again i know yeah, you feel i was like it's a slur. i don't care yeah yeah it's a slur, but i was like i don't care yeah. i don't define myself by what a bunch of white supremacists and cops say like yeah like mm -hmm. so honestly it's been great it's been great it, like is it, it was beautiful i i am i literally after it happened i was like even after it happened i still was like nah i ain't no way they're not putting this footage out they're like this yeah. is, they're, <laughs> like, I don't, you don't understand but all night before i was especially when people started trying to play me like assume i was like Please, dear God, don't let them chop up this footage to try to make this man look good and have people on this timeline talking about me crazy. I'm like, I have a hard time imagining you about to get your ass whooped like this on the radio. Like, like, oh. Mm -hmm. so, did, did, like, yeah. in the middle of it, did you start thinking that, like, uh, he clearly was, like, struggling? Like, could you see that in real time? The, the fact yeah. that he was, like, starting to stammer and, like, he was, like, not looking at you anymore. And then you were, like, this this is the moment where, like, maybe Eric oh. Adams finally, like... I knew off right. This is the I moment mean, where I end was... Eric Adams. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was he was visibly flustered off rip. He was he was he was flustered in from the beginning. But honestly, my thing is the funny thing is it's not even like you know what I do want to say. You know what I want to say for all the people who when I interviewed Marianne Williamson and y'all thought I was so mean to Shorty and I told y'all I swear to God I was being nice. <laughs> I said, I said, I swear to God, I was being nice. Okay, thank you, thank you. All right. Uh, I but, wish you weren't. I want to see more of that, Ole. I want to see. I want to see Ole interview so, like that. I want Ole yeah, to want interview to every single U.S. politician, like anyone who is going to yes, run for office. They have to have an Ole now. interview. Yeah. yeah the, funny, the funny thing is, it, it wasn't even like, oh, I, I went in. I had to go in with like some game plan to like, oh, I'm gonna shred eric adams or anything like that literally again i found out outside the room i was already there when they were like oh so you're gonna be doing the interview i was like that's crazy how no one said that to me like you know what i mean like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but i just i respond I, I responded i was just listening honestly if, if i'm aware if I, that was just basic awareness of what his administration does and what his platform and his policies have been and i just happened this is my line of work. And I think it's funny, like Eric Adams is my my arch enemy, like, but but not. You know what I mean? Like, like the minute if Eric Adams is not mayor, I'll never say his name again. Like when Cuomo was in mm -hmm. office, I was on Cuomo's head too. It's less, it's not about him as a person, like he's my WWE rival. It's about the fact that he is the mayor with an incredible amount of power, doing a bunch of things to harm every marginalized group in the city while actively deceiving those groups, right? Because what I don't like the idea is when Eric Adams won mayor, he he won, he had a strong majority of the black vote. And then people will say, oh, black people support this kind of over-policing or they support this kind of thing. Is No, they're being lied to. They're not, he's not getting up on black platforms and telling them that he's bringing back stop and frisk, that he's reviving units that were disbanded for abusing us. He's not telling, he's actively literally not telling people that people are dying at Rikers. His, his policy of his administration is to no longer report in custody deaths altogether. So it's like, I, I think it's important 
it's important to in the, in that moment be able to somebody be there to be like, no, that's not true because the reality is if you don't know. If you don't know or you're not aware, you're you have no choice but to accept it. Like if he had said those things to Charlemagne and, and DJ Envy, that's not their line of work. They're not gonna know. Oh, he actually when he says when he starts bragging about all the programs, they're not gonna know he cut the program budget. You know, they're not gonna when he's bragging about old Rikers and stuff like that. They're not gonna know about the deaths that weren't reported to them. So to me, that was just about doing that. They run them like I'm listening to him talk, and this is just dishonest. So it wasn't like I had some like these are my key notes or something like that, or the worst Eric Adams points. I got a lot of terrible Eric Adams points. I know everything his administration is doing. It was like I was just bringing up what was directly contradictory to what he was saying right then. Like, whoa, you the programs, you got the fucking money for the program. What do you mean? Like, what do you what are you saying? You're like, like, especially when he started talking about the migrants and he goes. Mm -hmm. I think of all the things, of all the bullshit lies in the interview, the one where he brings up the Ukrainian, the Ukrainian migrants is the most the, of, of all the pandering dishonest shit for him to be like, oh, you notice my brothers, he gets on this black platform and it's like, you notice they're not talking about the Ukrainian migrants, migrants, the way they're talking about the African and Latino migrants. It's you. You're the one not talking about the Ukrainian migrants and talking about the Latino and African migrants like that. That was you like on 4k on video like i can pull up the video of the town hall and then he proceeds he's like i didn't i did not name those countries two seconds later venezuela blah, blah, blah. <laughs> 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 oh i was a little bit disappointed that dj envy was seemingly like receptive to right-wing talking points himself you could tell based on like the questions that he was asking i think his uh, dad's nypd Oh, okay. That explains uh, everything then. Yeah. There's okay. a lot of migrant talk too. It's like, wh wh where is this coming from? Like, you guys yeah. are in New York. Like, what is this? <laughs> like, all this migrant well, conversation. Apparently, that's where like... they're all shipped off to in, in truckloads and in buses and stuff like that. And, oh, he'd be that's, like, that's no, if you listen to him, everything, if you listen to him talk, he is indistinguishable from a right wing. From he, he is, in fact, he's, he's, he's on, the, he's quite literally going the far left. Like, he's, yeah. he's literally saying, oh, the far left and they disagree with me. Da, 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 da. <laughs> And I, you know, I think it's so funny how um, there are people, there were people on Twitter, the people who assumed that I was going to be there cozy enough with him, that they they try to paint you like a latte liberal, like you in bed with the Democrats. Meanwhile, the Democrats them are like this far left radical nut bitch. Yeah. <laughs> like that, that's what Eric Adams is saying. That, that's who you think likes me. Oh. Okay. And I love how he spends the whole interview calling me a far left nut job only to be like, we will be disagree on 10% to like 90% we agree. Whoa. I hate that line of Whoa. argumentation yeah. so much. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. I hate that I, tactic. Like, I do not. And, and his platitudes, like, I'm a, what do you say? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a ball head, Aaron wearing, uh, I'm elected. Oh, nothing right. Nothing. Like that man is so unserious. Like he is so incredibly unserious. Like, Oh, you have an earring. Wow. Welcome to 1995. What the fuck? I was like, this is really like some old school, like you thought this like some like you really think you're cool, Modi. Like you're the coolest man to ever do yep. it. And I'm like, sir, sir, surely, surely you think cool has evolved beyond being an earring wearing cop. <laughs> right. well just the hubris it's like he said something to the effect of like uh, when people look back they're gonna say that may or made a difference like he said something to that effect and it's just so yeah. it was very touch like, and delusional like they're, they're self aggrandized no like, like, no like, like, like building himself no up as if people City like are, are gonna remember him as some amazing mayor and like this right. is really bizarre for you to say this while you are a mayor like <laughs> he's, I, I, he's so like, trumpian he, yeah like, he, very he, much he simultaneously is like, oh, he turned this city around, right? While then when you bring up the things wrong, it's like, oh, I've been mayor for two years and three months, which by the way is more than half your fucking term. Like, like, and he's like, oh, mm -hmm. you can't, those things can't be on, on, on me. I'm like, sir, what, what is it that we're talking about? What, is what do you expect COVID from me? I'm stuff. only four years into my term, all right? <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, this is, this. Is, I mean, to his, to his point, I mean, Bill, Bill de Blasio put a, a passed probably one of the best laws in recent memory when he literally created universal pre-k for yeah. new york city and everybody still hates him so the idea that anyone's gonna look at any new york city <laughs> mayor at any new york city mayor fondly look back fondly is a joke right just from like history because they, they 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 mess up so often they mess up so often him and saying the 
he had to say the city has a history of over policing, like that we're beginning to turn around by having bought, by having added a thousands more cops that he claims we don't need and, and bringing back stop and free. I'm like, they say you, you're you literally conducting more stop than hiring more cops and doing more unconstitutional shit. We really turning around this history of over policing in this city, but what are you saying? Like he literally just was trying to like comb through his Rolodex of things to say, even where, whether they were applicable or not. Yeah, yeah, I will say that interview is going to come in handy when he inevitably tries to run for president. We're going to use so much oh, of that God. interview. I hadn't even thought about that potential. W we're, would he really think of doing that? We're not even going to, though. No, no New York City mayor, oh former God. New York City mayor, has ever successfully run for president. Giuliani tried it. Bloomberg tried it. De Blasio tried it. Failed, failed, failed. They didn't That's true. Get past the, like... You, 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 this is, it's, it's a, it's a, no, for sure. It's a hard job. It's New York city, 8 million people, but, um, they all leave fucking up. Cause here, here's the real thing. Like when it comes to like Giuliani, obviously he didn't try to do this, but like for de Blasio, the thing is that he came in on the whole running on the whole idea that he was going to reform. Like he was this progressive mayor. He was going to reform the NYPD and everything. And the second he got into office and even like tried to do like even a little thing, it became very clear that the mayor is not the boss of the NYPD, really. Yeah. They are in fear of the NYPD. NYPD runs this city. Is sad. Yes. Yes. Um, because the second de Blasio spoke out and said even the smallest criticism or the spoke about the smallest possible reform, what did the NYPD start doing? They started going after his kids. Right. Yeah. You saw they threw the governor out the uh, out the funeral, the police officer's funeral over the weekend. They made the governor leave. Like oh, NYPD. It was, uh, yeah, I read that. Yeah, that was uh, the, the the uncle or the the police uncle of the guy who like told the the governor to leave or something. Yeah. Yeah, like think about that. It really, it really, it really says a lot. And you know, they asked the the journalist press, uh, Eric Adams, on it, and this presser about the fact that NYPD's there on their socials harassing journalists, harassing us. And he was like, "Oh, they're standing up for cops. So I'm not going to tell them no that they can't do that." Like, it, it really to me, I'm like, it's a good thing because most of the time you do this work and you try to explain to people which. You're just arguing until you're blue in the face that this is a police state or what a police state is or how much power NYPD has and how dangerous they are. And and there really can be no greater example than look at you. You can you can see it. This is what they this is what they do to journalists and attorneys and people who go do their job. Like, it's not like I gave a, a rousing speech at a protest and they argue and it turned into a riot or something. This is a nationally syndicated radio station that's invited on to conduct the interview. The mayor doesn't perform well. So now you're harassing journalists, you're harassing politicians. They even harassing, they even harassing the, poli the, the, the council members that said that they're wrong for harassing the journalists. Like, and the mayor's there like, yeah, this is good. I'm not going to say anything about that. It's right. so that's serious. why like so many politicians in New York have to kind of do this like progressive way they like position themselves because I noticed like a lot of the talking points that Eric Adams has sometimes people are like but you agree with that don't you I was like well I agree with the essence of what he's saying but I don't know if I agree with his actual policies and the way he enacts them but it does sound at times like he is talking about like you should care about uh, you know uh, mass incarceration you should care about the disproportionate amount of black and brown people in prison and and that you don't see that play out in his actual policies is you do have to do that is that just part of the the being a politician in new york no i eric adams is exceptional i think eric adams is, in, is incredibly exceptional like listen i again i've been a lawyer in this city following criticizing cuomo criticizing de blasio whoever is doing what nobody is to the is like in the vicinity of what eric adams is like this this isn't just like this isn't just like the Democrats are committed to a certain level of policing, just like Republicans or whatever, and, you know, doing marginalized groups this way. And so there's a bare minimum of policing that they are deeply invested in. This is somebody who is serving the NYPD there. They're there to make sure the NYPD gets everything that they need out of this administration. He is actively he goes way, way, way beyond the call of duty. And you know, it's funny. He's now reaping the consequences of that because the problem is what you don't realize what's so fucking stupid is he, he doesn't realize that. All the energy you spent convincing New Yorkers that crime is out of control, like you're not the fucking mayor. So now he's here like, oh, shit, they think it's my fault. Like, you know what I mean? Everybody's scared. <laughs> now you're trying to roll back the narrative that you spent two years and three months beating into people's minds. So it's his own, it's own, his own rhetoric's issue to clean up. Right. He's yeah. very, he's very, he's very dumb. Like this was not well thought out. Like this entire strategy of his 
was basically to to like attack his critics who are to the left of him by saying that they're wrong on their attacks on the NYPD and stuff and on my policies because the city is dangerous. So what I'm my decisions and what the NYPD is doing is right. The city is dangerous. But then he didn't think that, well, if the city is dangerous and you're the mayor, then that's on you, my friend. Like the right. buck stops with you. He didn't think this through. And that's why he's caught in this back and forth that Ole called him out on where one out of one side of his mouth, he's talking about how safe the city is. And on the other side of his mouth, he's talking about how it's the most dangerous the city's ever been because he didn't think this out. And now he screwed himself and put himself in this position where he's got to play both sides. And let me tell you, both sides fuck him over because if the city's so safe, then why does his policies not reflect that? And if the city's so dangerous, why the fuck isn't he doing anything about it? Right. <laughs> and you love to see it. We love to yeah, see it. yeah. Do you all yeah. think he's gonna get reelected? He I might. know it's early, but yeah, he might. He mm. might. He might. He 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 legitimately might. And I and I and I make. I want to make sure I say that because I don't want people to ever think that my criticism of Eric Adams will cease space or that I believe that it means that he's not gonna win or whatever, right? Because he it's. I I think it depends, right? I think the land shape the landscape can shift as it stands. I don't think anybody has joined the race early enough um, to start raising enough money to be able to, to, to beat him. He, he's some beat. You have to understand he has all the unions. He has all the unions. Mm -hmm. Think about the amount of money, the police and all of them have to go into promoting who it is um, that they want. So that being said, different things can change along the course of someone's administration. People can come to know them differently. I don't think I don't think he if he wins, it's not going to be about the margins he won by last time. But I do think if there's a world where like Maya Wiley decides to come back in the race, I think she could win. I think she could mm. win this time. Like I I think that would change things as it currently stands, based on what I know about who who has the backing to challenge him right now. I I think he could get reelected. But but that's not because he's getting reelected, just because there's really nobody running, like no real serious competition running that has a financial backing. I think if Maya Wiley decides now, especially with the way public perception on him is changing, um I <laughs> <laughs> in no small yeah. part <laughs> yeah i uh i think that he could i think maya wiley could win because maya wiley could have won i think if we had in hindsight we we've i think we've learned our mistake i think new yorkers have loved the left the new york i would like to believe the new york left has learned from our mistake and we are not interested in splitting the vote a million ways and i think we'll consolidate mm -hmm. around maya wiley should she run again and i think she could win so i hope she does i somebody yeah. I, I hope everybody starts harassing maya wiley to, to run again she needs to yeah. Maya, if you're watching this, somebody's gonna send you the clip. Right now, run. Yeah. How do, how how do you how do you like even start to tackle the problem with the NYPD being so deeply entrenched in politics? Though, even if someone else comes into power, aren't you still gonna like? Would that be the best position? Would you say for like leftists to approach this or like try to tackle this? I um, I I I don't know what's the best thing that we can do. I think the best thing that we could do for the next like leftist candidate that we have running like my Wally is to talk about the police after I think about anything like, because what will happen is sometimes, especially the vocal left, we will muscle, we'll muscle a candidate into saying the things we want them to say that they're going to do about policing, which will make them unelectable to everybody mm -hmm. else. You know what I mean? I think like, I think we should get off my Wiley. Like if should my Wiley or whoever runs, I think we should get off their ass. Like, please do not force them to commit to, to telling us that they're going to defund the police this amount or to say this or to say particular things because you want to say, you want them to say that just to appease your heart and it's going to cost them to not be fucking elected. You know what I mean? So I think, I think going in, I, I want to, especially now, I, I think I, I have a sizable enough platforms and influence to, to be able to do something meaningful for a candidate. I'm going to be more thoughtful about how how I go about trying to sell somebody to to New Yorkers because we, we, we can't sell them around. We can't sell them by packaging them up in our leftist our leftist blanket. That's what they're gonna yeah. say is a radical blanket. No God, not a need. So you know <laughs> what I mean? That's what they're gonna take, and it's it's gonna people are gonna go fair monger and do all of this. So I think we just have to be a lot more strategic. That doesn't mean that we don't vet and make sure we choose them. We know what it is that they really think and what their philosophies are, and we can discuss that more in specific about the police after on day one of that administration, you know, like, uh, let's not now because people will come up with that nonsense. They'll be like, Oh, they'll, 
my, my Wiley will agree to cut like one billion of an eleven billion dollar budget, but we'll be there screaming that they're defunding the police, and now they're like, oh, can he <laughs> can't have her. <laughs> That's that's so smart though. Like I I find like I'm guilty of this all the time. Sometimes you just want to hear the politician say the thing, right? Like I want to hear you say the words, say the words now. And then like you're totally right though. Like if it's going to make them completely unelectable, then it just appeases you. It just gives me the yeah. feeling. Yeah. It's like, oh, they said the th they they agree with me. They said the thing I want to hear out loud. Yeah. At exactly. the same time, we gotta do that more collectively. It, it, it can also be hard to then like I completely agree with that strategy. At the same time, it, then it. Do you get the left? Like this is why I think you need people around you as someone running for, as a candidate, someone people around you that others trust who are on the left that they yeah. can vouch for you. Because if you can't say the thing that people want you to say, you need people around that that candidate to and say those yeah. things. You and know? I agree with that. And I think that I think that I think that is important. And that's what I would. I hope that going into it this time, like the the people in New York City that like the me's or whatever our platforms are a lot more, make more of an active effort on our own to learn what these candidates are about and then package them in a way that is helpful to them winning. Because sometimes I'm like, I don't want, we don't need another leftist movement icon. We need another, we need one with some some actual political power. Like let's get right. somebody in there. So let's let's sell them as them that after. But like let's know and let's talk about. You can talk about their policies and what is them trying to do the things that we want without saying that. And I I'm, and I want to be clear in the comments because I see someone saying something. This is not me taking an against saying defund the police role. I will never take that position. I'm very I'm never against mm -hmm. saying defund the police. I will never take up that that talking point. And people are like, you shouldn't say it because it doesn't work. I don't believe that. It obviously works in or whatever in general. But but right now we're trying to get the stop cop the fuck up out of here. I, if we're if we're gonna do something. <laughs> so I think we should talk about what it is they're doing, like putting those resources there and this is the next thing. I think we should just shy away from from branding them as our leftist champion because that will that will allow them to take it and you see you you all heard the dog whistles even in that erica adams interview the yeah. way being yeah. far left they you know they can in and of itself use that or being woke as a thing to work against you so that's all i just i'm i'm i'm, I'm trying to be very sensible this time i'm really praying for yeah. my wiley to let me um apologize for my sins like because I, I love me some Diane Morales, but if I could go back in time, <laughs> yeah, I would have been talking my Wiley from day one if I had realized what would happen. But I didn't you, always know Eric Adams would be a problem. I did always know that. Well, I, let me ask you this, Ole. You know this is going to be a you know, tough you know question. Us, you know what screwed us over the last election? Yeah. We were all focused on Andrew Yang. That's yes. what I was gonna say. Yes. I was gonna say uh, <laughs> Adams. Adams. That's Adams was true. basically untouched. I yes. totally untouched forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> and then yes. there was um. The, uh, what's his face? There, there was someone who who I know. Uh, I, I forgot his name. Um, a progress. Some progressive was starting to rally around him, and then there were allegations against him, and so he lost his. He was like high up on the chart, Scott and Stringer. then Scott Stringer. Yes, oh. thank you. He had allegations against him, and he was like the progressive favorite early on and yeah. then those allegations killed him uh, he was done and the pro and progressives did, didn't know who to rally around yet because no one had broken out and everyone was just yeah. focused on stopping andrew yang yeah. and that's how adams mm -hmm. snuck through yeah no uh, I, I i i and i said this in my in my big eric adams video but andrew yang Andrew Yang got so much fucking media attention, so much media coverage for a man who only got like 12% of the vote, like so, so, so much media coverage. And I think that's a problem in general that we do in, in, in politics in general. It's like as in commentating, people focus on who they think drives engage, engagement or whatever is funnier or they think whatever is a character rather than like what kind of matters the most. Like when you think about it, Eric Adams is not somebody who gets a lot of like the, a lot of the other commentators are covering, but why not? This is a city of 10 million people. He's the fucking man doing nut shit every day like why aren't we covering <laughs> those people <laughs> you know i just don't understand it so i think i think we need to have more focused coverage like that when you think about it if you think about what one one's woman what one woman's hate can do for the perception of one politician you know what i mean like imagine if we had more we structured more like that you know what i mean like went mm -hmm. after more of these these politicians that are doing these things that maybe don't get the same kind of national coverage they're not like the marjorie taylor greens and get that kind of attention but you'd be surprised how many people are impacted by what they do and would find it interesting if we commit that kind of energy to it you know so yeah. that's why my greg abbott expose by the way is what's next my Gra greg abbott oh. expose should be coming out on like the 14th um, oh that's gonna so, be nice yes yeah, so I, I like i, I, I honestly i said to my boyfriend because nypd is harassing us 
I was like, oh, should we move to like Jersey or somewhere else? And I was like, you know, it's crazy. It's not really a point moving because I'm just going to end up talking about the police department there. Like, you know what I mean? Like if I go there, the mayor there. <laughs> and I was like, by the time I put out my, my Greg Abbott expose, I have like a, I, I put out, you know, I had my op-ed in essence about like the DC crime bill and the stuff in Atlanta. And I was like, I'm not going to have nowhere I can live by the end of the year. Like, there's everybody's police department's gonna be tight with me. <laughs> Have you had Did it make any you feel good at least at how how much people push back against that? Like how much they got ratioed and how many people were just destroying them online? Like that was that no, all? it is it is, is beautiful. Honestly, it has been okay. it has been all good to me. I have not like I the 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 negativity is so much in the minority. Like it's it's there or whatever the police and all these different things. But honestly, I've been I've been harassed by the police before. It's not the first time I rubbed at not on this. I will say not on this level. I this is this is one of the few times like my mommy is there was very, very, very scared, very concerned. And I'm like, me too, a little bit like on the weekend. I was like, oh, my God. Oh, OK, let me stay in the house. Like my my boyfriend's yeah. like, oh, you want to go to this thing? And I'm like, no, actually. <laughs> like, <laughs> I think it's not, <laughs> lock the door and close the fucking curtain. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, baby, you do not see NYBD. My boyfriend can do that. I think this has been, first of all, the most radicalizing experience for my Nancy Pelosi Democrat ass mother, right? You know, my mommy be there like, oh, well, I mean, I don't dislike the police like you and blah, blah, blah. Now she's like, Jesus Christ, ally me. This is from the NYPD's <laughs> official page. Oh my God. This is no ally me. They can't be doing this. This is, oh, this no. is crazy. No, mom no, is this is radicalized. wrong. <laughs> I love the message that your mom sent. I forgot what it was about, but you played it on your first episode of Lolo and Ole. And your mom was so fucking funny. Like, she was like, um, my essence off ed came out. She was like, Jesus oh, right. Christ, not this bitch about to be on Fanny Willis' ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she was like, like, She was like, wait, allow me, wait till the damn election is over to do this shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, my mommy did not want me to do the interview when I when I called her. When I called her and told her, she was like, Oh no, absolutely not. This is a setup I me. I don't know. It's a setup. It's a setup. I was like, mommy, what is that even? What do you mean it's a, set a setup? Mommy, how could he I lie me? All I know is it's a setup. What listen to your mother? Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so I had anxiety for the full 24 hours leading into the interview because oh my her mother was over there uh -huh. prophetizing the worst. <laughs> Moms always do that shit. Although your mom does like, I feel like she does have like a reason to worry just given the circumstances there. Yeah, but like God, moms can inflict so much anxiety in us. Oh, the they've never the legitimized my mother's panicking more in this life than letting her see them at NYPD tweets. And you know what's the worst part too? Yeah. First of all, my mother did not watch. Let me. My mommy watched David's coverage of the interview. <laughs> <laughs> the interview. Look, I sent my mother the interview. And she missed the rational natural I didn't even get to cover those parts. <laughs> I, I sent it to her at like eight thirty in the morning, like and and to like eight thirty at night. I'm like, mommy, have you watched it yet? Oh, well, honey, when I when I get home just give me a minute then she gets home sends me a screenshot of the tv like you see where i went to click on the interview but you see rational national has a thing so i have to sit down and watch this first i was like you really are <laughs> you really are my op like you're my <laughs> you're my op so then she watched she that my mommy's out with david to break it down for her first right i mean yes Yes, I mean she's you said she's a Nancy Pelosi <laughs> Democrat, <laughs> and, and she's that's my Nancy biggest Pelosi audience Democrat. here. <laughs> yeah, David, David is the most right wing member of our uh, of our group here. So <laughs> that makes sense, right? First of all, she, she watched David's coverage and then looked to see if the humanist had put out anything. I said. <laughs> <laughs> and like you're pissing me off, Miss. Like, you are pissing me off. Please go watch this damn interview. Oh. So she's seen it. My mommy's algorithm is set to her child. So she saw. I didn't tell her about the NYPD tweets <laughs> because obviously not. She is she is terrified and we're screaming at the mamas. She's seen it because she watched. Um, I think it was Indisputables uh, coverage. Mm. Um, and she watched them cover it, and they talked about the tweets. My mom's like. Let me wait. Wait, oh Lord, you know I don't even know how to use these apps like this. I had to go look. No, not the official account. Oh Jesus Christ, not my child. Oh Lord, my child in that country by yourself. Oh Lord, allow me, please. Get a camera. Get a camera for that. <laughs> like, no. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, my mother having an anxiety attack. Oh. Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, have you been I mean, contacted by any like networks or like like don't don't tell us but like has anyone contacted you since that interview to be, be like come on our show and like 
talk to this you know this uh this politician or something oh, like I, after watch because no. after watching that interview <laughs> no after watching that interview i'm like any smart and like not that you would should take the job or would take the job but yeah. any smart network would be like we we need her like this is this is exactly what Mehdi Hassan, see. Zateo. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. Uh, yeah, like that's would, a great example you would too. Yeah, think so, but you would you would think so, but honestly, I'm at this point, I'm accustomed to this. Like, I feel like every every year or like every year or so, I have a moment like this where everybody is like, "Oh my God, look how talented she is," and then everybody goes back to forgetting like that, like pretending that never <laughs> happened. You know what I mean? Like, mm. I you know what I mean? It never comes yeah. with with the the opportunities you expect um that it might and so for me That's you know i just i'm i'm more invested in building my own thing like i've i've mm -hmm. been more invested in building a and 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 for good reason like because i can do the things it is that i want to do and i can design um my show and in my image and what i think makes sense and platform who i want and speak to the views and issues like honestly i'm a person with anxiety and as y'all see a, a, a damn heart monitor trying to i will be i really don't enjoy arguing with people like i don't enjoy debate like debating with people like this uh, i i i i think are fundamentally fundamentally morally bankrupt you know what i mean like that yeah. that is it i don't i know i know that's something i do well on like anytime i do that that it always comes with viral moments for me being on rising and this and the next thing and i know that people enjoy that and that always comes with a lot of engagement but i've never been engagement driven you know it's about what i think is like right and messaging like i wouldn't argue with eric adams if he were just a creator you know what i mean like a content yeah. creator so i'm like he's just the mayor he's the mayor so like that that matters <laughs> like i'm like oh that's different that's he's the ultimate different. content creator yeah <laughs> <laughs> so for me i'm just i'm just like let it it's beautiful to be able to what the position i actually want to be in is where my own on my through my own platforms i'm able to garner the same level of engagement or people hear what i say regularly so they can learn why i believe what i believe and hopefully shift social consciousness but as far as like wanting to be on these on these networks these networks don't appreciate you you know what i mean like there's no reason to like yeah. to 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 want to be there or to like covet those opportunities to me like i always look at it as like i'm gonna make the best of every opportunity i get i look at everyone as an opportunity like do my best perform whatever and go and use that as an opportunity to keep building my stuff because the networks don't value you it doesn't matter you know what you do for them they'll use you for when it's convenient they'll whatever mm -hmm. have you and they, they also don't... don't want quit people questioning power like at exactly. the end of the day like that's yeah. ultimately what was taking place there right like that that's yeah. why that was so historic to witness and because you just don't often get to see that you don't get to see someone who's that educated especially on those topics just directly question the politician who's been lying like face to face that's, and, and that's know. precisely mm -hmm. why it won't happen right because yeah like not for nothing you know everyone's like oh well, i mean should should interview every politician out i'm like and that's precisely why you probably never see me interview none of them again like yeah. they, know, <laughs> they, they don't enjoy it like they 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 don't enjoy that experience even the most mildest of of how you how you decide to do things comes with like in like in a like just such a wild level of of criticism and critique and stress. I'd be like, Lord, who we'll, we'll time for this? You know what I mean? Like, oh, I, I could I could do I could do the things, and I but I do think I do think this. I think that it's a great demonstration of how valuable all the content that we all create and what we do actually is. Because when you see so many people be like. Oh, I can't believe like all the news outlets because my Eric Adams doc and stuff. I don't think I appreciated how many people have seen that. I'm not sure because you can't see the numbers. Like, I'm like, a lot of people have watched that. And clearly everybody in New York City politics and journalism uh, and journalism <laughs> have seen that. And, and it makes it it makes it feel like, OK, it's worthwhile that we spend this time educating people on things and creating these bodies of work and seeing how that can change how politicians are are able to deceive the public and how you can combine your advocacy and your principles with with, with what you're doing. So that was nice. I think it was nice to, to realize like, oh, like there are people all across the world who know I can't stand this man because of, like, <laughs> <laughs> like it's, 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 it's so funny to see that. Like everybody like, what? Like there were behemoths who, who were like, I know you hate Eric Adams. I don't never even been to New York, but what's, what's, what's going on there? And I, I think that's funny because they, they seen the doc and that's nice. I'm like, oh, I wrote that all on my own in my house. Look how many people watch that. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Oh, I see everybody having passionate conversations. And hey, everybody in the chat. I forgot to say hi to everybody. <laughs> they were all gushing and excited when you jumped on. Or I put it in the title of mine, so they already knew. So they're very, we, very excited. We have more viewers than normal, that's for sure. So, and, yeah, and we, we love to see it. 
You're clickbait for us, Ole. I have you in the <laughs> thumbnail too. <laughs> and I and I support you in that. I fully, fully, fully Thank support you. you. Thank I you. Said, I saw all y'all's coverage. I loved I loved David's video, by the way, David. I I, I loved oh, that. It was so good. I was like, oh, look. I was like, how the fuck did he pull up these receipts so quickly? And it's not even, I was like, oh, wow. I need a full more extra day to do this. I was like, how did he do this? <laughs> I just searched it. I'm like, oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, and I appreciated how many people did that because I'm like, it's easily verified. Like you yeah. can't like, what are you saying? Like everything I'm saying to you is exactly what it is. Like, sir, and I, I I felt almost bad because there's so much of it that I just I couldn't like. There's too much to cover. I'm like, I'm just watching like watch the full thing because there's too much there. But your yeah. comments about the FBI investigation into him, I didn't even t like. Oh, God, any other situation great. that would be its own video like yeah. <laughs> you, you, yeah. you, you nailing right. him on that and like i didn't even include it in my video because just it was there's just too much i, I couldn't was, I, that I, was I bring it all point where if he could he if he could jump me he would have <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, yes. oh, oh that really that really hit him yeah it was just out my mouth too fast like, I was like... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it, it, it there were so many times that i like genuinely soy face throughout that fucking interview it was just so funny it was it was pleasant i i loved it you, you I loved crushed it, it. I, I, lo I i loved it too i'm like my mommy my mommy and them all my friends are like look at you 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 came and gave people your best olivia pope <laughs> I'm, like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like he'd have been in there look at him i knew i knew it too look at him like trying to paint me like a leftist radical blah blah, blah. if i had had a leather jacket it'd have been over like he'd have been in there <laughs> like you see this <laughs> if he knew you were you were uh, once on a show a regular on a show called leftist mafia it would have oh been my god <laughs> <laughs> that was his first point he brought up. It, it, so that's funny. why. It's like... That's why I, this, I think it's also Ole important to like. Is this of the leftist mafia? Do we got the NYPD here to track down the gangs, in, in the leftist the gangs leftist roaming gang. New York? Like, yeah. That's why I think it was. It's important as well. Like it, the the title of my video, it it positions him as a conservative mayor because a lot of yeah. people have this idea. Oh, he's a Democrat. You know whatever. Like no, this is a this is a conservative man. Like <laughs> people yes. understand this guy is conservative. So too, right. he was a Republican. I, I think it's important to properly Republican. frame that. Yeah, he was a Republican. Yeah, he was, yeah, he really was a Republican, right. exactly. And he was a cop. Yeah, and the, I mean, that's also part of the reason. I mean, I, I showed that video from like 2011, I think, of of him in the kids' bedroom and fighting like the drugs and the gun because it's it it paints that him as like so the weird. clown that he is. Like, I think it was important to include that because it gives you the, the important context to understand who Eric Adams is. He's something as simple person. as a crack pipe. Like, yeah. it's so good. It's so it, it's that video so kills me every time. No, I love it. I'm like, listen, that that was beautiful. When I saw it, when when you played it, I've heard of the video before, but I've never seen it until then. And I was like, this video literally looks like it could be in the office. Like, this looks like it would. <laughs> well, it, yeah, it was edited by the person that posted it, obviously, but it's it's done so like so perfectly. Like the way he like the way he cuts as he pulls the gun out, and just the the way like it's not edited heavily, but just like the the quick cuts. It's so it's so funny. It's it's so good. I was like, oh wow, I played myself by not having this in my in my Eric Adams doc. <laughs> <laughs> there needs to be like a, like a parody of it where somebody just makes it more extreme. Like, and you could find like a dildo in your in your kid's drawer. Like, just just much more outrageous. Although you can't really parody it because it's yeah, already it's so hard. ridiculous. Exactly, it's hard to do satire and things like you know on someone like that. It's just it's already so ridiculous. Yeah. Right. Do you well, feel, and I'm kind of curious about this, that more people are, like, in general, outside of your circles, what some people call normies, but just, like, maybe not as left-wing or progressive or politically active people, are they starting to recognize a lot of this for what it is? Because I still see right-wing media pushing all these fear-mongering stories about New York, about how there's, like, you know, these migrants who are attacking people and they're attacking police and then all this kind of stuff. Like, that narrative is consistently being pushed and it, it makes it almost seem as if New York is in utter chaos, like you said, Gotham before, but, like, yeah. that's just not the reality on the ground. Uh, is is it, like is it something that people in New York feel? Or... I, I I think a lot of I think a lot of New York. You know, hold on, you know, hold on. There's a good video I got to show you. Hold on, it, it it's very unserious, but also very serious, very spot on. Hold on, I got to show you all this because <laughs> this is it. My boyfriend said this like this is how New Yorkers real New Yorkers feel. Hold on. Okay. A little bit too pussy right okay. now. New York City, I'm not gonna lie, we look a little bit too pussy right now. And I know I've been gone for a minute, but I come back, everyone's talking about oh the train puncher. <laughs> New York City citizens are scared to sink the train, but who? <laughs> not. 
And listen, the transplants, people that's not from New York are scared to take the train. Real New Yorkers, we know what it is, because we was there. Halloween. They let everybody out of school early talk about, just go straight home. Don't stay outside. The gangs are doing initiations. What we was doing? Still trick-or-treating. Get into the candy. Just get a punch. Just gotta get a punch in the face. And that's another thing. Y'all guys hit that up a little bit too much for me. Because now he's at home thinking, yeah, I got it like that. I'm punching people in the face. They scared of me. I'm terrorizing the city. I'm like the Joker. No, bro. You're not putting fear in nobody's hearts. Let it happen to real New York girl. Let it happen to girl from the Bronx. Oh, 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 oh Brooklyn. Oh, my Y'all would have seen Mike Tyson before that night. You know, he's seen Tom O's no Chick-fil-A. Like, he's pussy. <laughs> that, that's my official that's my official position <laughs> no, it's absolutely true well, like well listen i've i'm I've, I've been here 38 almost 38 years i'll be 38 in august i was born and raised i'm an old man yeah when were you, did i know that we knew this I mean, everybody, maybe just you. Yeah, I thought crazy. you were like one of the younger this mafia. <laughs> you know, I, I was born in '86. God um, damn. Yeah, I'm old man. You should hey, you should see my you should see my kids' reaction. Born in 2015 and 2019, their reaction when they hear I was born in 1986, they're like, "Whoa, back back in the 1900s." They say, <laughs> <laughs> "Yeah, that's that's me, old man, 1900s binder." Um, but I mean, here my whole life, never left, probably never gonna leave it's not dangerous it's never been safer it honestly every every single day is safer than the last day it's this city is i i'm not i i've never been worried about going on the bus the subway hell i i walk down the street looking at my phone half the time and no yeah. one messes with me no one does anything uh, my kids when i'm working and you know they're if they're home and their their mom takes them out on the subway to go to the museums to go to the park to go wherever they go not scared for them she's not scared honestly i i'm not big, a big traveler but i've obviously been to other cities around the country New York, I've never felt safer anywhere but Literally. New York City. I'm a, I walk the streets at any time of night. Me and my boyfriend walk to the bodega three, four in the morning. Like it don't it don't matter. The only the only singular time I have felt worried about my safety in New York City was when NYPD started harassing me this weekend. That's the only time I've ever been like, oh fuck. You know what I mean? It <laughs> might not be safe for me in this city anymore. That's the only time ever I was like, oh, NYPD sending my picture out to all the precincts. I don't like that. I don't yeah. know talking about that. That's that's wild. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, the the only time I am sort of like uh, in the city when I'm walking down uh, down the street is not when like uh, a regular like civilian passes by. It's when like uh, a cop car comes by. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's when that's I'm right. like, oh no, what's gonna happen? If I'm driving. If I'm I, I'm in outer boroughs, Queens. I got a car. Uh, when I'm driving, uh, see a cop, I'm, oh shoot, I'm not even doing anything illegal. I'm, I'm completely fine. I just, I know they'll do whatever they want to do. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm a white guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. like, I could only imagine, uh, how others feel when they see a cop, uh, in their vicinity. Yeah. That yeah. ass. That ass. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. I was going to ask you, so what have you been up to lately? You're still crushing it. Oh, Laura Nadi, uh, episodes all the time. Uh, what have you been up to though? Um, putting out only in friends now every Sunday uh, at one o'clock. So that's official doing that. Um, what else? Um, I told you I'm a battling health stuff. Um, but putting out my Greg Abbott expose, only in friends. I put out an op ed for Essence. Um, I do an interviews, media stuff. Um, writing i have a bunch of different content produced so i'm gonna get ready to put out an interview with like imani barbarin you know, um you know the disability rights activist y'all know her from mm -hmm. social media y'all got to mm -hmm. yeah, um yeah. so we're gonna put that out with Ima um, imani and that's really great i interviewed hannah and michael recently about like cop city for a product one of my learning productions i'm working on so honestly just content creation chilling out with my boyfriend and my cat uh trying not to let this autoimmune disorder take me out the game um, that's been stressful. I, you know, I can't eat, I can't eat nothing no more. I can't eat gluten. I can't eat sugar. I can't eat dairy. I can't eat grains. I can't eat eggs. Um, no. 
Yeah, it all whoops my ass. It's the best thing. What do you eat? <laughs> um, uh, <What's> <laughs> that's like <laughs> the mayor of New York. <laughs> <laughs> lunch and dinner that's now. the standard for a week so far <laughs> that, that ass. like it really so honestly just just working i can't think of anything else i'm doing I, oh i'm going um in a i lie in a couple of in a couple of weeks i'm going to la i'm going to be on hassan's stream oh hell oh, yeah. Nice. yeah yeah nice nice so, yeah so I'm, I'm i'm doing that i have a, i have a bunch of different things like that going on like different stuff and projects and appearances and things in the works that people are going to see um sorry i'm i have to log on this 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 little gadget they gave me for the heart monitor to log log mm. when my heart acts a fool um mm. next up uh you know ole will be interviewing kathy hokel and then eventually <laughs> joe biden you know who they i want to stay they don't know to stay away now i want to <laughs> see you interview like an israeli official like that would be oh my god very oh, very oh y'all want y'all want to see the end of me look look at nypd doing <laughs> me now over y'all, oh y'all are really trying to get me out of here like <laughs> listen i i, I, I I've never been more aware of like normally, you know, I, I don't have a very I don't have the same like fear levels as people. And I don't take like, you know, I get death threats and things like that, but I don't take those. I'm not I don't pretend like I'm in my house crying about them or, or worried or any of that stuff. I never I always feel a certain level like I'm privileged. Um, oh, I get to pontificate on social media and do all these different things. I'm not who they're going after. I'm not anybody's revolutionary that they're going to harm. But increasingly. In case yes, the, the the threats have escalated and, and 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 where they're coming from uh has escalated. So I have and you combine that with the fact that I like I said, I, I got this autoimmune disorder in October that's been fucking me, has like drastically changed my life and I have this hard thing I'm trying to figure out. So I, I say all that to say I'm I'm in, I'm highly I'm a lot more aware of my own mortality these days and I'm mm -hmm. I'm a lot more aware of uh dangerous things so i'm like oh yeah they'd get me to fuck up out of here like i said i i my i'm everybody is funny people keep being like um oh you need to go into, into politics which is never gonna happen i want y'all to know now it's never gonna happen you're never gonna see it it's never gonna happen never ever ever i don't want to be nobody's politician mm -mm. you see how people stress you out when you're just a social media content creator they act like mm -hmm. you have a coach you're not operating properly like the cult is trying to revolt 24 <laughs> 7. so no 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 i'll 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 pass on 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 that, but in, even in them saying that, I'm like, you know, quickly they'd get me to fuck about it. I did one interview in NYPD is like this bitch is public enemy number one. They they they'll just slander in the Bahamas tourism industry at this point off of it. <laughs> like, would you, would you would you would you would you take a job as a as a advisor for uh someone who who was running? No, no, you wouldn't even do no. that. Mm -mm. I was gonna say. You know, we were talking Sorry, before Bender. about getting like. Yeah, a, I was know, like, is this the offer? <laughs> let, 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 <laughs> no, I was going to say, no, I was going to say, let, you know, we were talking before about letting a politician run and let them be strategic in terms of, um, you know, uh, appealing to a mainstream audience and not sort of weigh them down with like, you know, hitting every progressive ideal publicly, at least like on the campaign trail. Um, and I was what like, I you know, quietly, what the, what what I. The, what I consult with if if a politician reached out to me because they're interested in my my perspectives and to talk to me about things, like like I I did meet like I do do work like that. I just don't I just don't go to to Twitter and and whatever. Like when I criticized the DC crime bill, like the councilwoman and people reached out to me and I spoke with their office and told them exactly why this is bad and what provisions to do this and what they should do and yada yada yada. I'll tell you why I have this problem. What I think you should do and based on my expertise, but it doesn't benefit anybody for me to like do it for them in, a, in an official capacity because what would happen is if a politician if a if a leftist politician that we actually liked or someone progressive enough to care about our perspective, um so much so that they would they would allow me to be on their payroll then everything that about that I'm allowed to be as somebody who's on the left and as a commentator and blah blah and an activist and all of these different things that they're not allowed to be as a, pol a politician to be successful would be imputed to them and destroy their electability on that end and then the flip side would work for every way that a politician has to do or say things or you know be about everybody in order to be electable is something that harms the credibility of us with the audiences that we have so if I had a pol if I was attached to a politician in that way that would then ruin my credibility and also make me ineffective so either way mm -hmm. it's a yeah. 
it would be would cancel each other out. So I would help. I would help like in the sense of you want to they reach out to me when politicians reach out to me and want to hear my perspective on why this this, isn't the next thing. I explain it. I talk to them. I do meetings. I do do things like that. But I wouldn't I wouldn't work for them. It would ruin it would ruin it for both of us. Have you seen they're doing uh, so there's this super PAC called Moderate PAC. It's mostly um, it's bankrolled by Jeffrey Yass. He's a Republican um, billionaire donor. <laughs> and they're, running ad- <laughs> <laughs> they're running ads against Summer Lee in Pennsylvania. And everything about it is like, oh, she said to fund the police. Here's a video of her saying this. Here's a video of her saying uh, she's an abolitionist. And like, that's what they're going like. She's an incumbent now. Right. Mm-hmm. So like this, these were attacks before she got elected. And they're still using like the same attacks. Um, yeah, it's just how how do you like? I I don't even know where to begin because like a lot of this is cynical, right? Like when you try to like explain defund the police, they already know what that means, and a lot of people just pretend as if oh that means you want to get rid of the police or whatever. Like how do you how do you even begin to like respond to that? Because it's I just nonstop. You know, I think you don't let what they're attempting to do. I think you don't you don't allow them to frame these things as they're a bad thing, right? Because it's not like mm-hmm. what they what they're saying, they're not even adding anything to it. They're just taking yeah. what we said, what we put forward as our positions, whether it be woke, whether it be uh, um um defund the police, and they're just saying it like in a negative tone. You know what I mean? They're yeah. saying it with a negative implication, and we are clamoring like, ah, no, I'm I have to distance myself from this thing. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have any power if you don't allow it. You know what I mean? Like they, yeah. they call me, they're calling me a woke lawyer. Like I didn't I didn't freak out about that i didn't add any hysteria to that like oh my god i'm not yeah yeah when eric adams called me a far leftist i didn't go i'm not a far leftist blah 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 Mm -hmm. i didn't allow you to paint it as ridiculous because you're trying to say it's ridiculous or trying you're trying to present it in this way that it's this wrong thing but if i just continue to to hold my square and articulate my position and you can't yours it every everything will be said about what it is anyhow so it's just like mm. you don't play into that you don't allow them to have the power over framing whether or not it's a bad thing and if you if you respond if you feel the need to like defend it like no i'm not this thing yeah. because they say it's bad you're allowing them to determine what what things are and what the default is so you just ignore them i didn't let them all right okay woke lawyer Ooh, yeah <laughs> for the most part like it seems like summer lee's just letting it roll off her shoulders and like even yeah. Jamal Bowman, like he's saying, you know, fuck APAC because they're going after him and whatnot too. And they're trying to use these same attacks to fund the police extremist and whatnot. Um, yeah, I think that's that's good advice because there there I feel like there was a period in the United States where for the first time, like some white people started to realize, like during the George Floyd protests, at least yeah. like with the suburbanites that I know uh from Portland, like, oh wow, it really is different the way that black people interact with the police and then within like six months that was all out the windows like oh crime's out of control so i feel like there's no like you can't teach someone or maybe you could temporarily inform yeah. them but that goes away within six months it gets deleted out of their brains so it feels it's like so this, much like, easier the fear monger right it's so much easier yeah. to be, like that person who's randomly punching people in new york they're gonna come for you or your kids or your mom did you think right. about it? Do, do you do not want them to you know be on the street you know that kind of shit yeah, I mean, we had in Portland, the, there was these suburban moms, they were locking arms to protect like Black Lives Matter protesters. And it was like, oh, my God, things are starting to change. Yeah. Uh, but then a year later, it's like things are so bad in terms of like rhetoric. Uh, people, our governor in Oregon just recriminalized on... drugs. It's like we you just you can't make progress. Like it's it's a that's, fucking that, that's what we were the cast. thing. I it's a bad it's a bad thing to say to you from the police, right? That that was that yeah. was the end result. Yeah. I, I mean yeah. we could do a lot more when we focus, when we just focus on instead of responding, talking about what needs to be talked about, right? Like when you think about it, or even like the Eric Adams stuff, Eric Adams was never like a hot topic of discussion. Like that was or Rikers even mm-hmm. were not the things. That's not what the media is like. That's not the engagement heavy, whatever. But if you focus on on presenting people the things, you know what I mean, and, and covering those things in the same way people will consume that and that and that will be effective so i think instead of responding to what they are feeding us they intentionally the right feeds us what they want us to spend our time running around like they literally want us to be responding to woke and ti and blah 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 and all while that's happening no one's bothering to make the documentary they need to make on politicians who've been wreaking havoc like greg abbott for 30 years like why isn't there one already you know what i mean like Mm -hmm. um so i i just think we need to focus less on them and more so on 
putting out the narratives that we want, right? Instead of waiting to respond to how they framed it, let's just talk about what it is that we are seeing, the politicians that we see as a problem, the policies and the things, and focus on educating people on that. Because to me, if you focus on educating people on those things day in, day out, by the time you have a moment like this, like with the Eric Adams interview, people were primed for it. You know what I mean? Like the people who who are my my audience, but all these people who've seen all the things you put out or may are put out into the zeitgeist about them, they're ready to receive that. They understand more. They understand why you're saying the things you're saying about Rikers or what you're bringing up about the subway, but because I've been allowing them to see this is what the conversation has been around crime. This is what they're doing about policy and stuff like that in New York on the regular. So I think we just need to focus on talking about the things we're talking about, regardless of what they're doing, because at the end of the day, the mainstream media and everybody else will catch up. They or they'll start talking about what we make viral or what we make trend or what is what we're talking about. Like there are lots of times like recently I've started like on my social medias, I put out like daily video, like videos on TikTok and Instagram and all those every day and on Twitter. And those will go viral and people will be and I don't make those videos, but any with any respect to what the discourse is. Like, it doesn't matter what everybody's talking about on Twitter, what everybody's talking about on YouTube, whatever have you. I make those videos in just totally based on what I felt like, this is what I want to advocate around. This is what I want to talk about. And then you know what? People talk about that. So that's mm -hmm. what I think that we should do. I think we should focus on trying to start our own conversations. And I like uh, on that on that point, like people on the left have been talking about Israel forever. And it's it's been wild in the past several months to see the media and like people generally just catch up on that and and now realize what's been going on there to the point where this week, like a couple of Republicans on Morning Joe, or at least Bush Republicans, are saying that Biden's too far to the right. Like he needs to put conditions on aid to Israel, on weapons to Israel. Like to see the rest of the media and even former Republicans catch up on that is, it's, it's wild. But this is the stuff that we've been talking about, you know, forever. So yeah, to your point, I think it's important that we put out our own message and, and, highlight that to ensure that there is you know a counter narrative that that people yeah. can let latch on to and eventually at some point hopefully realize that you know we are right and, and the positions that we advocate for are the humane positions yeah exactly yeah. exactly yeah that i don't know if you saw there was a tweet from it was one of the pod save america guys and he was responding to chris coon saying that they should condition aid to israel and like the way he framed it was like Kind of like this passive aggressive backhanded ass attack on the left like he said something to the effect of this is chris coons this isn't some far left uh radicals saying it this is a moderate democrat oh there, yeah perfect yeah i got it for you <laughs> perfect yeah it, this pissed me off this. richard haas and senator chris coons now he, support uh, conditioning aid to israel these are not moderate centrist establishment figures not lefty radicals who are finally recognizing that the war in gaza is a moral and strategic disaster whereas like it's, a, it, it's have been a insult correct the whole time like, it's like an I, insult but he's saying i get what, right? he's, I, <laughs> yeah, I get what I, he's trying to say but but there's also the other half of this where it's like these lefty radicals have been correct the entire time like right, that's right. you know and, and and honestly just fuck them <laughs> I, 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 at this point like, <laughs> that's what i think honestly just let them have their snarky little stuff to themselves like I, you know, I don't, I rarely see the right going out of their way to try to like, be like, no, we're not the right. <laughs> we're not the far right or whatever. Like they don't care how much we mockingly mm -hmm. condescend and we call them idiots in every way that we can. And they just keep it pushing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like they, they're like, Hey, whatever. I'm gonna say my idiot shit louder. So <laughs> for me, I'm like, just let them go on. And like, at the end of the day, people don't change their opinion in one sitting. Like they, they don't. Yeah. People, you, people often don't even realize the point in time in which they came to start feeling differently than they felt. We just have to continue on and keep doing it in the face of how people scold us and talk down to us and, 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 you know, mock us essentially and just do it because eventually as people learn more, as people experience more, as people become more radicalized and they see how things work. Like I said, like even just seeing my mommy and my, my boyfriend's on the phone with everybody in his family, like, no, this is the NYPD's page. Look at it. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, they, they just couldn't, couldn't believe it. Just everybody, you know? And so it's like people wow. eventually they catch up. Everybody doesn't have their radicalizing moments at the same time. So, mm -hmm. you know, let, let them think that being a central is the mark of objectivity and intelligence and whatever the fuck they tell themselves, you know, and they'll and they'll just they'll get there eventually. <laughs> and they'll the next day, there. the NYPD put out that tweet where it was like the picture of the funeral and it was like, don't mess with us or something like that. I was like, that, that was a like congressman. A said yes. That. Oh, congressman. Yeah. Sorry, congressman put that out. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, that sounds like a threat, though. That's yes. like just a yeah. scary thing to show.
you know? Yes, absolutely. And, and you know what, listen, I, for me personally, I'm just like, I'm, I'm never have been given a better opportunity to just be like, y'all see what I be saying? Y'all see what I be saying? Like, this is what I be saying. Like, like my mommy, I literally, you know, what's so funny. I'm in such a space of, I told you, I told you so with my mommy that like, I swear to you when I'm not on the phone, my mommy, I'm in the house literally just as concerned and anxious about the police harassing me as, as my mother is like to my boyfriend, like, please lock the fucking door, baby. You, what, aren't you paying attention? Like, meanwhile, but the minute my mommy gets on the phone and starts talking about it, I'm like, yeah, that's your precious police. Mm, almost like I told you. <laughs> like, she was on the phone, like she said, oh my God, Alami, you need to really be careful because you know those police, they'll do anything. I'm like, I do know. Shocked to see that you know. <laughs> I can't even take the care and concern because I'm too busy shoving her face in it. Like I told you. <laughs> <laughs> my, also, funny. my sister, I went down to my, 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 my baby sister. I called my sister like after an interview because I, I sent it to her for to watch it. She was like, Yes, yes, I seen the viral clips on TikTok, like from, from other people, right? I was like, Yeah, but like Femi, watch the interview for real. And so when I call Femi, she's with her husband and she's like, Yeah, we have to call you back. We're watching our law and order marathon. I was like, Femi, Femi. <laughs> I was like, NY. <laughs> I was like, Femi. NYPD is in the middle of harassing your sister. She said, you know, NYPD are my boys. <laughs> and she was like, also, could you please stop upsetting all these police and these mares with my fucking last name and my face? Could you stop? <laughs> so that's my official position. <laughs> oh, God. It's funny how family, like, my mom, she'll ask, she'll be like, hey, did you hear about that thing that Biden did? I'm like, yeah, I did a video on it yesterday. I'm like, did you see it? She's like, oh, I, you know, I haven't been online. It's like, yeah, but you're asking questions that I have answers to already. <laughs> that, that is my mommy. My, my, shoot, my, mommy, my mommy refused to even watch my Palestine documentary because I didn't even hear the audio. No, it it's began. So good, it began with. It began with, you know, I I condemn a mom's me pause, just turn up, turn off. I, like, all right, I see what she was like. I'm not gonna watch that because I know I know that you're gonna set upset me. We gonna have difference of opinion. I, oh god. I said, all right, all right, all right, all right. Mm, cool, all right. So. <laughs> but my daddy loved it. <laughs> oh, good. That's awesome. Yeah. That's great. No, no, nice. my dad, my daddy loved it. He thought it was, he thought it was excellent. <laughs> As he was concerned, right. you said in that video, he was concerned about you doing a video about that too. So yeah. you did like it. Good, good. Yeah. Hey, my daddy said, um, had his friend, his, uh, one of his friends text him, uh, a Nigerian friend, like, oh, did you see this? And he was like, yes, I'm very proud of her. And and, if, and the friend was like, but she didn't listen. <laughs> like, she told me what she didn't get it. And my daddy was like, yes, but she thought about it. <laughs> like, he, he gave you an analysis. He was like, I trust that my daughter is actually funny. The amount of people who like my mommy was telling, showing me today, my parents forward me people trying to like, like slick slander me, give like shade me to my parents. And I'm just like, first of all, I'm 30. I'm going to be 31 in July. I'm not sure what y'all think my parents can do about anything that I'm saying. That's one, mm -hmm. but two, I'm like, they're also my parents. Like they, they, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my parents just go to bat for me every time. My parents are like, "We well, yeah, are absolutely proud of her." That's my my mommy. Like, nice. Yeah. So they're 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 very proud. They're very happy. My mother is terrified, but they're both very very proud. <laughs> How about I would be terrified too. What was sure, what yeah. was the post show response like? Were they were they like, oh, that was wild, or that was awesome, or that was good entertainment, or yeah. that was dangerous? From my parents. No, 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 from the Breakfast Club crew. Oh, uh, like, oh, the like, Breakfast Club. Oh, the Charlemagne. Charlemagne was like, that was phenomenal. Char Charlemagne was like, that was one of the best, like the uh, the best performances he has he's ever seen. He 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 mm. he said what he said was he was like, you know, people he's like, I that's he said that's one of the greatest political performances he's ever seen. And he said there are people, people will talk a lot of shit online, like they'll talk so much shit online and get in front of a person's face and fold. And he's like, but you did not fold at all. Not, not a crease, not a nothing. And mm -hmm. fact-based, direct, the voice didn't shake, nothing. So yeah, Charlemagne sang my praises. Maybe they'll have like a, a more prominent role for you on The Breakfast Club because that interview probably did them well for views. That shit was good. Like, like if you get an interview with like any politician, I feel like it's not going to do too well. But that one did numbers for them because everybody was watching it and talking about it over the weekend. It, it, because of the dynamic of it being me and Eric Adams. Like, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's it's funny. 
you know it, what I will say. It, it is nice to have officially solidified I am his number one critic. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah everyone. I was like, knows I've that. always said that. I'm like, but that is factually solidified. I am his number one critic. Yeah, no, everybody was really like, Mark called me, Mark Lamont Hill called me, and Mark was like, he calls me because of the phone, he goes, did you just body the mayor of New York City uh, the radio <laughs> break? <laughs> and Mark was like, listen, I hope you, like, that's some shit you could show your grandchildren, like, please, stop. Yeah. Like, that's woman, appreciate yeah. that. like, that's a baby. I've like, never seen nothing like that. <laughs> So yeah, it, it's going to be like one of those moments where we look back on and be like, oh, my God, that shit happened. The, so the day before I was like amped up, I'm like, oh, my God, I got to fucking see this. And then after I watched it, I was thinking about it for two days, just like specific <laughs> parts. I was watching <laughs> videos on it, watching David's commentary, like a- anything I could find. Because it was just like, holy shit. Like it was such a it was such a big moment that like you don't really realize how big a thing is when it's yeah. happening. But this one is like, no, this is fucking huge like a politician has never been held accountable this way. like at least i've never seen a politician be held accountable this way it's always just like you know groveling at their feet or yeah. backing down as charlotte said or they, get, or they like, get to run away because it's like in a public space like a press right. yeah. or something. They're like i'm not gonna answer that question all right we're gonna pivot right now like, yeah so it was that. it was really important and like who was it that said like matt that said like this needs to be studied in journalism school it needs to be studied in journalism school and good journalists will emulate this but the problem is that that type of like criticism and pushback will never be allowed on the mainstream. Like Mehdi Hassan yeah. on MSNBC came the closest to doing it. Um, yeah. But it, he, well, look at him now. You know, he was out at MSNBC because he was pushing back a little bit too much. Yeah. Um, and, that, yeah and, it was, it was great. and that's the thing that makes me like I always feel I, I always appreciate how much everybody wants the biggest opportunities for me and stuff. And when other people are incensed that they feel like I'm not getting what I deserve. But for me personally, those kind of things just confirm to me that the right thing for me to do is to build my own thing and to, and, mm-hmm. and why I love life. For me personally, Alurinati is the thing that matters most to me and in my own brand and what it is that I do, because that's what allows me to do what it is that I want to do. There's nobody at the end of the day. People will say things like, People say things to me a lot like, oh, why do you do this? Why do you have that person on your show? Why do you curse like this? Why did there are a lot of people who are like, oh, you shouldn't be. That's the mayor. You need to show him certain more respect and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, at the end of the day, absolutely nobody can check me. Like I I own all my shit. (laughs) I own all my shit. I make the determination on how it's going to be done. If you ever find yourself asking why did align me do it like that, it's because I can. (laughs) Like, And I think that is the beautiful thing, right? A lot of these people don't have they they cannot do it like there are consequences uh to doing that you lose your job no one's gonna fire me from a i'm not yeah. gonna fire me like so <laughs> it's like great like it is excellent i really only have to contend with my own anxiety <laughs> that's really all i have to deal with like oh once i Relatable. my boyfriend was there what was nice too is like my boyfriend was in the uh watching it he was in the room and when it was done like we walk over like nice. eric adams and everybody is still in there we're gonna go like take the picture i walk in my boyfriend walks up to me i'm like how was he he's like he's like because you're a fucking beast let's fucking go <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he was like, my like, oh, good man. <laughs> wait the picture I uh, I, i'm sorry this wasn't clear good to man. me i guess the picture was taken after the interview it was taken after the interview yeah oh, breakfast my God. Says that. They, they do that with every guest that's like a thing yeah. Yes. That was like yeah. got to be the most awkward ten seconds of your life. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. you know what's funny? no. It was worse like, for him, I'm guessing. For it's me, for I him. don't. I don't have mm. any issue. I think like a lot of people uh, like. It really shows showed me how much a lot of people present to be a different way on the internet than they would be mm. in spaces. I'm not one of those people. Like I have no, I'm like, my whole career is being in the room with everybody who opposes me. Like I tell, I probably tell prosecutors all the time, like, you know, it's good morning. Hey, smiley, da, da, da. And we get on the record and we have to do what we have to do is a job. And I, I think this is why people need to see like the difference between, I would say a, lo- a lot of what kind of representation you're going to get out of your attorney has a lot to do with what kind of person they are. If you have an attorney that is scared, that is soft, that is worried about like uh, feeling, you know what I mean? And and isn't able to rise above that, you're not going to get the best advocacy. So for me, and no, it's not awkward at all because I have no problem that like, I have no problem. Anybody call me up. Like I said, the, it, this started from Charlemagne calling me on the phone to hear my, what I had to say about Candace, about them bringing Candace Owens on there, which I had said online. And I said it to him for 45 minutes yeah. and laid into more detail. Like, <laughs> Hey, yo, no, y'all dead ass wrong. This is wrong for X, Y, Z. You know, so I don't have a problem um, articulating my point of view. And I I think, I think you know, it's funny. I don't realize, I don't feel, I'm not somebody who ever feels like, oh, because I'm a woman, you know, blah, 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 because I don't feel that, uh, 
that sense of inferiority people see about women, but it always shows me in moments like this what people think about women in these capacities because no one expects men to like back down or to like, you know what I mean, cower or not articulate the perspective that you have. It's like, you know, I'm not a prophet. I'm a, I'm a professional. I'm not just a, like allowing me. The person is like, this is, I'm an advocate. This is what I do. If I, if I could only have my opinions or articulate them in a room full of people who agree with me, then all my clients in jail. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, so no, it wasn't, it wasn't awkward for me at all. I was very, I said, good morning to him. Bye. When he, uh, the mayor, he, t uh, Eric Adams texted me afterwards and he, and he said, um, he was like, Oh, it was nice meeting you today. And I said, It was nice meeting you too, Mayor. And he and he asked me what my name meant. And and I told him, and he responded with a prayer emoji that he did not change to the color black. It was yellow. And I think I feel like that says a lot about a psychology, right? <laughs> yes, yes, it does. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, it was not a, it was not uh, awkward at all for me. It was about honestly, even when I when I was on rising, like people would assume like Robbie and I got along great. Like, like we would have those mm -hmm. the minute the segment is done. Hey, what's up? Da, da, da. Like a job is a job, a role is a role. I, I can mm -hmm. be kind to you as a person, or I can deal with you professionally and still do what it is that I am meant to do, be there and do. So it was not awkward. I, I grinned in my black boy. I was like, honestly, once the interview started, I was like, oh, it's happening. All right. Okay. My anxiety could at least subside about, because yeah. I didn't think the shit was going to happen at all. I was like, in a way, I was sure of it. I said, I'm going to be here by myself telling, telling them about what's happening in New York City. No way. So once it started, once I was talking to him, I was like, Oh shit! This is really happening. Me and Eric this Adams really are talking. This is nuts. <laughs> like, I felt just like everybody else. Like, ain't no way. Like, and that's why yeah. when I put up the picture, I had to be like, "This is not AI." And even after I did it, I was like, "I have to put up this picture so this internet, so this interview doesn't get buried." <laughs> like, so they have to, right. they have to publish the interview. Yeah. Yeah, if you didn't say that it wasn't AI, I would have automatically assumed it was like AI and you were trolling or something, even though you're not known to troll, just because it's like so out of the realm of possibility in my mind. Like, I remember your tweets from like last year where he, Eric Adams would tweet about like, oh, my haters. And then you would quote to him and be like, my name is Olayami. Forget <laughs> it. Like, so like the fact that you faced him, it was so, it was just amazing. Yeah, no, I, I honestly, I'm, I'm very grateful for the opportunity because that is not one that anybody gets. It's not one that I was yeah, like, no shit. like, people be like, I've had people ask me questions like, oh, what would you say if you could speak to Eric Adams? I'm like, please stop asking me stupid questions. Eric Adams and I are never speaking. <laughs> I have no magical, I have no imaginary conversation planned with him. So when they, when they said that, like, you know, be under with the mayor, I was like, nah. No way. Now you get to reach for the stars. Imagine whatever you'd like. Imagine conversations with whomever you'd ever dream of uh, talking with. Uh, Next yes. is Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Listen, they, they would get me out of there. Let me let me upset Joe Biden and the immigration situation would get sticky. <laughs> oh, they would be oh. so. First of all, my mother would be the first one to cut me off. <laughs> like, let me let me do that to Joe Biden. My mommy would be like, "You are really a stupid bitch." <laughs> like, you are. Wow. <laughs> my mommy would be hot heated. <laughs> I do gotta say, I respect Charlemagne for like actually reaching out to talk. Yeah. Um, after you criticized him, like. Usually people shut down and they don't want to hear from you once yeah. you criticize. like the fact that he reached out was actually really because I've always followed Charlemagne for the most part. I really yeah. I like almost everything he says. Sometimes he'll say something that I disagree with, but you could tell that he's authentic and coming from like a genuine place. I, yeah. I respect him so much more knowing that he wanted to hear your criticism like that. Yeah, it, that's good. Yeah, me too. Me too. That's not that's not the first time I that's the second time for the year. Charlemagne's called me like. You hating again? <laughs> like, um, and I and I, I really appreciate that about him too because you know I'm I'm not necessarily I first of all in general I don't too much like to say negative things um about mm. people who are like my mutuals or I know like if I disagree with something you really like say like I this guy just go about my business like I'm never gonna cold tweet y'all or whatever have you right but like the Candace Owens thing was like I know you fucking lying. You like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I know, I know you fucking lying. And so, um, cause you know, we follow each other. I know he's going to see it. Mutuals, whatever have you. And people are tagging him. Um, so I respect a lot too, that he called and he, he didn't call like, Oh, let me argue with you. He called. He was like, he was like, Hey queen, let me have it. He was like, let me have it. Mm -hmm. Tell me, tell me what it is that you think. And I, and you know, I was in fact letting him have it. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I, I really, I really, I really respect that too. And there were a lot of people that were like, 
oh, Charlemagne didn't do enough to defend her or call Eric Adams on his misogyny and all this different stuff. But I'm like, yo, first and foremost, if Charlemagne had been talking more, y'all would be the same ones that are like, oh, you bring the expert there, let the expert talk. They would be mad saying that he shouldn't mm-hmm. be participating. He doesn't know what he's talking about. That's what they'd be saying. That's one. But two, Charlemagne provided me an opportunity I would never get. Like, as with, with, with mm-hmm. that, like, period. Like, regardless of what he did in the interview, I would never get that opportunity at all. There's mm-hmm. just no world in which it otherwise would have happened. So I'm very grateful, especially for it to come out of me being critical. Like it didn't come out of me having to be like, oh, that's okay. I understand why you brought Candace. Good. No, it, it has come out mm-hmm. of me actually consistently, Charlemagne, valuing my critiques. Um, so I I appreciate that I that he allows he allows for that criticism, right? And we do it. Like I just put out an episode of Olay and Friends with a whole round table and we we're talking about um, comments Charlemagne has made and different things and to have been Candace Owens up there and why that's wrong. Like I really do, I'm allowed to critique him in my, in the full sense of what I think is wrong and he will appreciate and receive that and still continue to like value me and extend me that opportunity. So I, I, I can only I be that. grateful for that. I think yeah. Some people don't accept good go. faith criticism from friends. Yeah. Oh, we know. absolutely. Oh, yeah. you, I was gonna say, we, no, we, we I, know I, very much. <laughs> I think, uh, Speaking I think from first hand experience. Though, like you, you did get that opportunity, but a lot of other people would have squandered it too, right? Yeah. Like, that, that wasn't mm. the only part of it. Like, yeah. you absolutely yeah. crushed it. Yeah. Oh, well, I knew this one thing I will say. Like I said, I had anxiety for 24 hours. I knew there's no world in which I talk shit on Eric Adams and his administration every single day and get in front of him and let him watch me. I can never say one word about him again if that happens. There's just no world. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I knew it was like, everyone's like, oh, this is a, a make it moment. Like, this is a career defining moment for you. But I was like, it also was a make it or break, a make or break a moment. A moment. If, he had, if he had watched me, that would have. Yeah, that, that, listen, they would have had my ass for could you imagine? Like, oh, that's it. No one did everybody been like, fuck Rikers, fuck Bill Reform, shut your fucking ass up. <laughs> <We don't> <laughs> <care>. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I I knew that I had to perform. So I was I was I was glad about about that. Oh, I'm seeing everybody is tweets i'm trying are everybody's comments this conversation is so lively i've not been able to follow it for one second of this episode like everybody in the chat talking i'm like oh y'all are moving too fast <laughs> like, <laughs> like oh gosh well, I'm, I'm looking i'm looking i'm looking okay yeah no i give up i did they're giving you your flowers as well you better and i appreciate that y'all i really really appreciate the love no my my mommy was like it's really crazy. I would have had, she was like, it really takes some, my mom goes, hey, you know what? I mean, I don't like to be crass, but it really takes some balls to go do that. <laughs> she was like, that really, so I was like, that's right. Thank you. Thank you, mother. Thank you. I, re- I re- That's like the really highest compliment that. from like a parent to say like, oh, you had courage. Like that's yeah. good. Mm-hmm. It's funny because my my mommy my mommy was hating before the interview and then she and then she pretended like she wasn't a hater like after the interview. She was like, <laughs> my mommy my mommy said and I quote, "I mean I know it's gonna go bad. Listen to your mother, man. Listen to your mother. God, I pray you find some humility. <laughs> oh Lord, it's gonna go bad after the interview done. Well, we knew that was gonna be. We knew that. We knew that. Nobody was surprised. We knew that it was gonna be excellent. And I mean, come on, we 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 knew that. <laughs> Lord, no, no, mommy's really proud of you, but mommy's really proud of you. Mm-hmm. Courage. I said, ain't this some shit? <laughs> Revisionist history. <laughs> you were gonna be an anxiety attack for 24 hours, Monique. <laughs> oh. Well, I see someone in the comments said it was so good that that uh, Eric Adams went to round to Rikers of Al Sharpton baptize him, and that is true. The next morning, that was like, after though. I thought yes. that people were joking Korea. about that. No, that was after. <laughs> that he sounds like a there. joke. No, he did that. It was the following directly morning. after. Yes, directly. Oh my after. fucking god! The next it. morning, like the morning <laughs> was, of. Hoping he was, did it on the really morning funny. of the interview coming out. So hoping that would bury it, like in the in the press. Like, okay, sir. Wow! I, wow! Holy shit! That just makes it so much better. Oh my god! Listen, I thought people yeah. were memeing about that shit. No, that actually is exactly what happened. That's not like a, a Twitter joke. No, that happened. I'm like, <laughs> I, 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 I was really like, this is actually hilarious because it really says to me the level of the scramble. Like, would you coming up with like, who came up with? Who suggested? I, I got it. I know what. We love Al Sharpton baptized <laughs> at, at Rikers. Like, what? <laughs> what, what, so what are you random and bizarre. Like, 
he's <laughs> like a thing to do he's like an old school he's like when you see when you when you start researching things and you see the things that they got away way go got away with on the political landscape in in like the 80s and 90s and you're like how the fuck he's like plays by that playbook like really you al sharpton al sharpton to baptize you at rikers Inside of that era, like, pandering yeah. is like almost <laughs> offensive. Like that, like the level of what he's doing is so offensive. Like, oh, religion! All the time, we got religion. Like, what? I don't even what. Like, the, it, it actually blew my mind. So, yeah, that that tickled me. That tickled me deeply. Uh, oh, let me look in the chat. But yeah, that's what I've got. That was my, and now I'm just doing press and interviews and things whatever for the next i feel like my next several months are like booked to death you gotta I be appreciate like you giving person. us the nice. exclusive post there yeah, no kidding i, I did right. you know yeah, I, right. I love you all i, I would have done it that, that was... night but i was so tired it's all good oh yeah no, you gotta be yeah, like the person about. that media outlets go to now when they need the the critic of adams like when they're writing a story on eric with something eric adams says some policy some announcement and some the new york conference. times dropped a piece on it today the new york times dropped their piece on it today oh um, Bloomberg dropped a piece on it. A lot of places um, dropped that. a piece on it. Um, hmm. New York Mag is getting ready to do their profile on me, so that's mm -hmm. dope. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. So it's gonna it's, it's oh, gonna yeah. be lit. Yeah, it's my year. We love to see it. We 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 love to see it. And everybody, if you haven't, you should subscribe to Alernati. We have dope yes. ass things on there. You can join memberships now. We have the best emotes. We have our own emotes. Um, They're so fucking cute. Hotep Rahim is my favorite. That is one of my favorites. Let me uh, let me show you all some of my emotes while I'm here. Um, we'll have we're I'm going to start like live streaming, doing a live stream show like in the next couple of weeks. Um, every week on there. Let me show. you Oh, nice. Me. Hopefully yeah. not Thursdays at eight thirty p.m. <laughs> No, I will, I will not do y'all like that. No, I, I don't do y'all like that. That's why Olay and Friends is on Saturdays. Uh, or Sundays, I mean, at 1 p.m. See, see Hotep Himi? So cute. Oh, I love that. The little laser nice. eyes. That's so good. Yes, I, I I love it. And then if you see me and my red locks, my usual. Oh, that's great. <laughs> that's mad. Yeah, so I, I love my most. The channel is very, very cute. We have lots of dope ass things come in, mad interviews and stuff. Like I have, and what I'm going to be doing is basically so every time I put out my Alernati productions, you know, my big docs, the interviews, the you know, there's always like bits of interviews with people that are weaved in there. I'll make the full, the full interviews um of, will be available for my channel members. So when my Greg Abbott expose comes out, the interview from that will the interview that's weaved in there will be available for my exclusive members. Same thing for mm, all my videos coming idea. out. Yeah, and so yes, it's gonna be great, great a year full of content. Please go check out the channel, subscribe if you haven't, like, comment, share. Like absolutely. Oh, yeah. look at these comments. Oh, also, I did notice um David's comments were so nice. David's comment section on, on your video coming ever. I got you. Thank and I was like, I was like, look at y'all. I was like, now you appreciate me. <laughs> they, they were in there like one of the top comments. I was the talking about one of the Don't top comments was like, oh, Eric Adams should have known that Olay was so good. I was I was like, y'all should have known. <laughs> I'm telling you, the, the live audience is different than my usual odd. Like, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the algorithm, whatever it is. It's it's like the live viewers is like a fraction of my audience and it's not my usual audience. I don't know who they are, <laughs> but, <laughs> but they definitely appreciate you. For my sure. Facebook audience is very different than my YouTube audience. My Facebook audience is like 95% like evangelical fascists <laughs> and my YouTube audience is just like leftists, like chill people and like 5% maybe sex bots, but that's a different story for a different day. Not the PIB bots, but you know, different bots. Listen, oh, we love to see it. I checked. I was like, oh, look, I was like, I've never received so much love from the rational national audience in my life. <laughs> Listen, I was like, it was resounding love. I was like, look at you fake motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> I literally said to my boyfriend and I was like, I was like, ain't this some shit? A bitch has to read the mirror to get some respect around here. <laughs> 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 well now they know if they didn't know now they know oh, i loved it thank y'all for having me y'all i'm going thank to you miss you all. great to have you back it's been so much fun yeah thank you. you bye everybody you take care
That was fun. That was good. It was, was great, great to have to so talk about fun. that too because I, there was, oh my God, some I was stuff stunned. I just had to know. I just needed to know yeah. the details surrounding it. I needed to know the before. We all saw the during. We needed to know the before and after. I'm I'm glad yeah. the photo was brought up later because I meant to ask earlier, like when that photo was taken, and mm. it, it's Breakfast funny he was taken at they, the end. They always take a picture with the guests <laughs> and in front of the sign. So yeah, but I, I didn't know if it was like good. before I mean, or after. It but something it was funny. It was after. Yeah, yeah. No, that was interesting. Should we grab some super chat? We, we probably should grab some of these while she was here because I think some of them are directed towards her. But uh... did we also yeah, say did... Rebecca is going to be on next week? She had to work. Yeah, yeah. She's so. She... If you don't want her to work anymore, you should go subscribe to her channel and donate, and then hit up her Venmo and all the other links. Because uh, yeah, if you give her all the monies, then she can just spend more time doing the leftist mafia. We need her to go we'll full to time. Do... Yeah. Mm -hmm. we're, we're 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 lying here it's just so clear that the four of us can't have more than one woman on the show at the same time we're just be raging we, we get nervous <laughs> we, we, we can't get talk to ladies <laughs> you know one one lady i could deal with you put two in the room you know and all war break hell it's breaks it's because they have stages they have stages down. that's a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> can't handle it and their bodies destroy uh, vocals apparently that's what I've been taught to learn. Mm, oh, right. Yeah. Ryan Chan. Uh, this is for me. Ryan, thank you so much. $5. NYPD isn't the only uh, cop Twitter that is psychotic. The PD of my city posted and doxed information of protesters during Black Lives Matter on their Twitter. It's not surprising, but um, yeah, it's, it's so unserious because like the whole perception that you think they want to get across is protect and serve we love our community but they're just like being antagonistic and dickheads to people online it's so bizarre but i mean what do you expect from american cops oh wait are we going in order here yeah are we doing are we just doing them now yeah we're just doing them. oh i mean there's no reason not to <laughs> oh that sounds good yeah hold on where's my uh hold on i gotta see uh oh well i know that one's not for me all right, this one's for me. Uh, Razor Blaze with a super chat. Yay, Ole. Also, please invite Stephanie Sterling on the show. That's a. I would love that. Yeah. They're great. Absolutely. Uh, Ryan Chan, another super chat, $2. Shout out to NJ for abolishing the ballot line. Oh, yeah, I, I can't articulate it but i know that the ballots in new jersey are super fucked up and confusing i don't know if that's what ryan is referring to but if they actually fix that then that would be good just like if you're if you're not sure what i'm talking about google like a new jersey ballot um if i'm thinking of the correct state I'm pretty sure though that they're the ones with the fucked up ballots maybe chat can correct me if i'm if i'm wrong uh the lumpen lodge with ten dollars thank you uh, please read my WSWS article, a memoir of a worker's experience in the American Gulag. I am a felon in recovery. Let me know if you want to talk. I get frustrated with you normies sometimes. Well, hey, I'm not a normie, but um, I'd be happy to read your article. Um, what is WSWS? I'm trying to uh, let me Google the uh, the title and I'll I'll be sure to read it, though, for sure. Um, oh, not for me. Um, let me check here. Oh, this one's for me too. Nappy by nature, ten dollars. Thank you so much. Hey, can you talk about or look into the street cop training that recently got leaked? It's basically what you expect from cops, but paid for with tax taxpayer money. Uh, thank you so much. I love your work. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Yeah, that sounds interesting. Uh, I haven't seen this, but I will try to uh, look into that. Maybe somebody can tweet the video to me or the or the article to me uh cosmere dragon with ten dollars thank you so much ole i'd uh, i'd have sent this super chat to you but you weren't streaming on your channel mike please send this to ole glad to see you return on lm and loved your eric adams debate yeah that was good shit the anti-corporatist with a membership super chat two ideas have videos of his quotes rtg on your phone um what, what's rtg i don't know is it what am i missing here i don't know and name and, staff at um, rikers to be like and uh name staff at rikers to be like oh i know rikers otherwise flawless victory what does rtg mean
Ruth Tater ready to Ginsburg. go. Ready to go, I bet. Oh, RTG, ready, to, ready go. to go. Oh, yes. I thought Ruth Tater Ginsburg. <laughs> Ruth Tater. Yeah. The first thing that came to mind. A tater top Very. version of the late Very Supreme close. Court Justice. Uh, thank you, Thomas. Appreciate the gifted sub. Thank you. Uh, what, what do you what mean? Do you mean? Appreciate. The oh, we all got one. Did, did we all get that? Oh, oh, there we all thank you. Yeah. Oh, cool. Oh. Go check out what do you mean's channel. Yes. All right. I'm do me a favor. Pull up my one specifically. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I see all three. <laughs> yeah, shout out uh, to what do you mean? Still alive. Thank you for the very generous 1999 super chat. I asked some far righties online to define wokeness and got one answer I wanted your opinions on. They said it was, quote, when diversity is prioritized over fairness or logic and brought up live action Snow White as an example. <laughs> it, to them, <laughs> These people are such thing they don't like. That's, that's what it is. It's yeah, the thing they don't is, like. What, what does that even mean? Yeah. Prioritized when diversity is prioritized over... It's Fairness the same complaint logic? about, about is, DEI. It, it's every pop so culture subjective. right-wing channel. It's always the same thing. And what it comes down to is that, like, if you, like myself, are white and you grow up and white is the default setting, then you don't realize yes. that when things suddenly change from the default setting ever slightly, even, like, don't worry, the majority of all superheroes are still white men, the majority of action stars, all that shit. But if there is a little bit more representation of diversity, suddenly it feels like oppression. It's not. It's an oppression simulator. People think that they're being mm -hmm. oppressed because other people suddenly have some more representation not enough just a little bit it's yeah yeah no, that's I, I that's that's spot on but what i'm sort of focusing on here is how is live action snow white an example of diversity prioritized over fairness or logic what does snow white have to do with fairness there's a new disney logic. snow white live action remake where the star isn't 100 white so there was a lot no, of no i know that but because, what does that yeah. have to do with fairness or logic at all what is <laughs> because she took Logically, the job of a much more deserving much more white talented person. white woman, white woman. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah i guess that's that doesn't make any sense though uh cars karshman I don't know uh, if I said that right. Probably not. But thank you for the four ninety nine. Great to see Olaimi. Uh, I enjoyed watching her fillet uh, Adams. Hope her cat as well. Yes, Rahim as well. She posted some pictures of him recently. Uh, Cosmic Dragon. Whoa, with $20. Thank you so much. Very, very generous. Well, I wasn't going to bring up Olay's uh, MW interview, but since she did, I hope she knows my constructive criticism was about her editing of the video, not the questions you asked. Compare Olay's interview Versus Mike's interview. I feel like Ole is a much better interview for me uh, than me, so I would not want you to do that and compare them <laughs> side by side. <laughs> uh, Funky Fuesh, $5 super chat. Thank you. It says, wokeness prioritizes fairness and logic. That's why conservative slash mega hate wokeness. Makes more sense. Uh, Bay Photo, thank you for the super chat. Says, was honestly waiting for Eric Adams to chant, build the wall. His Trumpian rhetoric on migrants <laughs> basically gives a win to Governor Abbott. Kudos to Ole. Yeah, the whole, I was watching the interview and then uh, I forget if it was DJ Envy or I think it was him who brought up the migrant thing. I'm like, yeah. Is, why are we talking about migrants? It's, it's New York City. What's going on here? <laughs> yeah. It was, so, it was so, it was so weird. And there was, uh, a little too much of that from, uh, yeah, of course, Eric Adams latched onto that for, you know, a few it's minutes. It's frustrating how, like, much that us versus them rhetoric resonates with just, like, normal people. Like, I, I don't necessarily know too much about DJ Envy, but he kind of just strikes me as, like, a bit of a political normie. Um, yes. And yes, so, like, that's how, that's what I guess. He, he's, he's persuaded by those reports about how the migrants, uh, they're taking resources away from the, the New Yorkers who need it. When in actuality, that's not really true. You know, it's yeah. just they're trying to get you to think that they're the cause of your problems. And this is, a, you know, a tale as old as time. We've been doing this to immigrants forever, you know, mm -hmm. where we scapegoat them for all of our nation's problems. They're not the problems. They are a benefit to our country, like very huge benefit economically. Yep. And in other ways, too, not just economically. Like, I think that they bring so much more than just like economic value to the country. So I feel like we need to get out of this mentality as Americans and stop seeing them as the enemy and see them as like hu fellow and, human yeah. beings. And and just stop falling for it. Like they've been using the right. same the same exact talking point forever. And people still like I, I get, you know, people who have, you know, 
they were using this 20 years ago and they were around back then and they fell for it then they fell for it now but if you're like someone who's like in your 30s or i'm dj in vegas is i don't know 40 50 whatever he is but like someone younger shouldn't be falling for this shit like like you have to be able to see through this garbage at this point like come on yeah think about it this way if an alien species discovered the planet you know they would look down they wouldn't see any borders they just see a bunch of human beings right try to view humans as that alien would where it's like we're not americans we're not canadians we're human beings we're just the same okay so stop being tribalistic dipshits an american Uh, would say that I get to be Canadian. You get to be American. That's how it is. Well, that's fair. I'm that's joking. Fair. That's fair. As long as I, 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 want, I want to get healthcare though. That's what I will say. That's the difference. Is that's why. That's that why you. That's why you want us all to look the same, or all not look the same, but all be the same because you want you want our healthcare. I need a fake Canadian ID to get leave healthcare. American out of my country. <laughs> <laughs> uh, B Wood one seven one with ten dollars. Thank you so much. Yay! Ole decided to show up on my birthday. That's a great gift. Well, happy birthday, of course. But yeah, that is a good gift for sure. I've seen like there's like three or four people that I saw that it was their birthday today. I'm like, a lot of we birthdays planned today. it for you all, just so you know. <laughs> we we knew that it was your birthdays, and we're like, we got to get Ole on for their birthdays. I gotta be uh there. snack panther be thank right you back. for the ten dollar super chat it says great to see the smartest and coolest public defender ever more olay is never a bad thing agreed lance do you have chats do you want to grab i'll i only have a couple so i could get to them sure. really quick I'll, I'll read them fast uh right green with the five dollars uh notice tyt didn't touch this olay versus eric adams interview story at all um i they think didn't. only only well only one of the why I would you not only, cover that I mean, uh, I know Chad why. Rishi like... show, yeah, I think only Dr. Rashad Rishi show covered it. Um, otherwise, I didn't see any coverage. Wow. Wild. That is that <laughs> is petty shit. Like that is fucking. That is fucking petty. Like this is a a, yeah. a, a journalist. Like I mean, you, I, I would consider only a journalist after that interview. Like this is somebody challenging the mayor of the largest city in the country in a way that he's never been challenged before and you didn't think that and was most newsworthy haven't been yeah i know Do they spend time like fear-mongering trans people again instead like fucking ridiculous <laughs> uh agreed uh what do you mean with the 199 uh with the message thanks and again everyone should check out what do you mean's channel uh rodberry generators thank you very much for becoming a member looney tunes 9000 with the 199 olay knows that karen gasparian is a karen <laughs> i think that speaks to your points david maybe <laughs> um andrew s uh let olay know that i joined team raheem with a very generous ten dollar donor thank you so much and finally venetia david with the five pounds lens you teach me so much thank you i appreciate you I appreciate you as well. Thank you so much. And all you. I uh, lost my place. Here we go. C333. Oh, am I? Timing. No, I am on me. Okay. C333-9409. Ole, he ghosted you in real time. LMFAO. Yeah, that was that was nuts to me. It pissed me off. Oh, for me. Weston Rodberry is a new member. Thank you, Weston. Uh, Tokyo Hans with a super chat. Even Batman's Bane couldn't take down the NYPD. Ole's a lot closer to doing what he failed. (laughs) 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 Right. That's right. right. Let me tell you that during watch, I remember when that movie came out and I was watching it and I was like, wait a minute. I'm seeing Bane and his his uh, his uh, you know his his guys beating up the cops. I'm supposed they're, they're supposed to be the I'm supposed to be rooting against them. <laughs> 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 it's like yeah, take down Batman. Let's go Bane. <laughs> uh, this is for me. Hold on. Uh, yes, narrator with a ten dollars super chat. Only the left thinks like this. Let's be quieter about our policy desires. That's why Occupy Wall Street produced Tim Pool in the time the Tea Party elected a president. I mean, but t- uh, I mean, uh, I think there's. I, dis- I put, disagree the that it created Tim Pool. I think party, Tim Pool used it as a jumping off point. But, Sorry. But hold on, this doesn't make any sense. The Tea Party didn't elect a president. Obama was elected president during the age of the Tea Party. Um. I, I mean, I I think it I th- I think 
Listen, we're, we're seeing, we, we too often see leftist candidates lose because, you know, the, the larger mainstream public just isn't in tune to uh, what's going on. And they fall for, you know, mainstream media and centrist Democrat propaganda because it yeah. sounds reasonable. It's very effective. It's, it's um, yeah, reactionary. I, I think there's effective. zero that it's white, problem. Well financed as well. That's yeah. also very important. I, I, I think there I think there's zero problem with a, a respected leftist candidate running for office being a bit more careful than uh, they would with the, the the language or what policies they run on while they campaign. And then the second they get into office, just fucking go balls to the wall, go for everything that we know they stand for. Like we we're losing election we we lose elections sometimes to like not just not 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 playing the game and being strategic like like uh you know liberals and neocons and even the right wing is at times like look at how the right's failing right now they're not being strategic with their true views on abortion mm -hmm. and they're paying the price for it like they 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 can't even. They can't even get it together and be like, guys, we why, why don't we just stop spiking the football and get our guys in, and then they'll continue to pass this stuff once they're in. But they just can't fucking do it because they're wear they're wearing their joy on their sleeve, and they're going, yeah, we did that. We banned abortion here and there and here and there. All fifty states, baby. Paying, and they're paying the political price for it. Yeah, being I think stupid. Bernie Sanders is a good example of what you should do, which is actually speak about the issues you want to, but make sure you just phrase them in a way that everyone actually, when it's laid out in that plain language, agrees with. Like a lot of ideas mm -hmm. sound scary when it's like, well, that's communism, that's socialism. But if you get someone who actually can communicate, hey, is is is, is there a 1% versus the 99%? These very simple slogans, like people actually yeah. resonate with that. Yeah, the part of the problem is that the left is like this organic uh, thing. Right. Whereas these politicians, they're very focus group driven. So they'll say things that are like tested in focus groups. And so they they workshop different slogans, whereas we just say what we believe. And I think that there's nothing wrong with like being more strategic and trying to meet people where they are, frame things differently. Never compromise your values, obviously. But like, you know, you, you talk about things differently. Like I had one candidate. I, I'm blanking on his name. He was a Zoomer that was running for Congress, but he he was uh, he was running in Florida and he said that. When he talked to more rural pe people, when he described like the benefits of Medicare for all, uh, he would talk about the small business tax cut that that would that, that would come with that. And that was his way of like trying to appeal to them specifically, like just trying to like be more mindful of how we appeal to people. I think that's that, that's important and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm, I'm not saying I'm not saying lie either. I'm just being I'm just saying. Yeah. Be careful with your language. Be very specific in what you say. Like you could easily advocate for like there are numerous ways to advocate for the same policy for a policy that gets us to the same place for the same exact policy. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. um, you know, let's face it. Uh, I'm never going like, to I'm never going to tell activists that defund the police is because I, I agree with them. Yeah. But a successful politician from the left probably should not be out there saying I'm going to defund the police, but there are ways to say that without yeah. saying those words. Mm -hmm. And yeah, then you say, I want to invest gonna, in like other if aspects, I was running, if I was know? running, if I was running for mayor in New York city, I would, I would be running on a platform right now that we cut education funding and things like the library's opening hours to send billions of more dollars to the NYPD. If we care about stopping crime, why aren't we creating programs for our children, our teenagers, our our middle schoolers, our high schoolers? Why aren't we creating programs for them to go to after school where they can, um, you know, continue their education, socialize in a, a friendly and safe <clears throat> environment? Uh, why are we cutting library times when kids could be learning, go, going there after school and learning instead of, you know, uh, getting them into trouble or whatever? Like that's a that's a that's a much more easy di to digest way for people in the mainstream to take what is essentially we're going to defund the police and put that mm -hmm. funding into other more important programs
It's the same thing, but I'm, yeah, because if you I say, say defund the police, they'll clip that, put yeah. it in an ad, and be like, Matt wants to defund the police. Like, so if you don't give them that bit, but you still communicate the same message, you know, you could be more electoral, uh, electorally viable. And then, and right. uh, it's important to point out that there are people, that, and I'm thinking of TYT here, that will criticize activists for saying defund the police as if the activists are hurting politicians. You can't no. mm -hmm. you can't control the you can't control what activists are going to say. You can't control right. what activists uh, how they're going to frame their message. So the idea Nor of, should you. Nor should no, you. Yeah, try. nor should you. So to use your platform to try and criticize that is ridiculous. It's yeah. it's another thing to discuss strategically what a politician could, should do while they are running. That is separate from trying to control what activists are saying and which mm -hmm. will never be successful even if you wanted to try to do that. So, yeah. Just, I think it's important to separate those two. Yeah. Matt? Um, is this for me? Oh, it is for me. Uh, Looney Tunes 9000 with a super chat. No matter how Anna Kasparian tries, she'll never match Ole with her pure class and inspiration for <laughs> others. We love you, Ole. I, 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 I don't... <laughs> Good super chat, but I don't know if anyone's making that comparison. No, we don't need I'll to be. Yeah. We don't need to be, uh, you know, pitting people against each other right now. <laughs> right. Thank uh, you, Rodberry. Rodberry Generators. Thank, thank you, so you much to for me the, as uh, for me as well. Actually, all three Rodberry. of us. There we oh, go. Wow. wow. Nice. Can you can you pull pull up each individual Rodberry? It doesn't say generators. which ones who from what. Sure <laughs> that's one. Yeah, I wanna... That's the other one. That's oh, the other. Wow. One. <laughs> and probably Lance <laughs> too, right? Oh yeah, we got. Yes, let, I got one. Uh, I got one as well. Yeah. Oh, there you go. And, and yeah, nice. David Dole already did. He was very gracious. Yeah, I did get nice. one more though. So can I just read that extra one out? Oh yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, go ahead. So Ren uh, with the five dollar dono. Hey, left this mafia chat. Lance streams during the week are great, by the way. I appreciate that. I they know they they know. I, I'm Lance, sure why don't you just why don't you just connect your channel to the stream? Because I'm always already streaming, or can I do it offline? Because you have a different stream stream yard link every week. Why don't right? you start a new stream when we start? Then you'd have to end I it do. and have like two different streams yeah, though. So why, if he did, so why, yeah. So why not? But just, if I log, but I've, I, if I log in while I'm streaming, then does that like reveal stuff of y'all? Does it? Because like I'm already live at that point. So I usually just mute the tab and put it in the side until I no, see the, the opening be, sequence. I don't think so. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> your, your chat's saying I'm lazy. <laughs> <laughs> I am lazy. That's true. That call out is very. <laughs> He streams more than any of us. So I wouldn't say that Lance is lazy. Ms. Warner, $10 super chat, thank you, says Montana Supreme Court just shot down voter suppression laws all four at once. Wow. And the Democrat from uh, Eureka Mountain? Montana. Uh, is that what that's supposed to be? Oh, Montana. Uh, is the son uh, of the Oath Maybe Keeper. it's Eureka Mountain. I don't know what the fuck they got. It's, in a, it's a lowercase T. <laughs> yeah. There could be a Eureka Mountain. In my, you can yeah, tell me right. there's, you can literally make up whatever you want about Eureka. Montana, and I'll believe you. I got no idea what goes on. <laughs> exactly. I have no Same. idea. <laughs> is the son of, a, of the Oath Keeper, right. Stuart Rhodes, uh, what? 27, and wears black nail polish? Woohoo. What? I don't know anything about this. <laughs> but if it is true, that's not good. That's uh, the Oath Keepers really bad. Aren't they a far right militia? Yeah, they're part of the uh, group that stormed the Capitol and coordinated like the overthrow of the U.S. government. I'm pretty sure that was them and uh, Proud Boys, right? The Oath Keepers and look that up. Well, yeah. being the son of one doesn't mean you're one. I think yeah, it seems to... like yeah, he yeah, is like different than this his father. Real. Uh, Dakota yeah. Adams. Um, is it Mountain or Montana? Uh, what? Yeah, right. I don't know. Is it Montana? Yeah, Kalespel, okay. Montana. Oh. So there's he's no the, Eureka uh, Mountain. He's the son of Stuart yeah, Rhodes. No and in this picture, he looks like a he looks like like a metalhead guy. Like he's got long hair. He's wearing but a leather this jacket. Is, but this is framed that he broke free from his like you know uh, family and is and is not yeah, right. He's, well, he's not a Democrat. Same thing. Right. So obviously yeah, yeah, he's yeah, yeah. not. He's not. He I'm suspicious Democrat. because there were, you know, people who broke fee free from the West Westboro Baptist Church, and uh, they were oh, still doing think, propaganda. I, I think I remember anyone. reading a story about this. I think that this is the son that I, I believe he helped turn his father in. I, I, I don't oh, okay. Well, then that's pretty compelling. Speak out of turn, but I think that's uh, what that's ooh, what led that's to hard. that happen mm. because he realized what his, who his father was. Oh wow. Um, well, then he has he has wild. credibility. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
right. Oh, uh, um, uh, Miss Warner is in the chat saying it is, it is Eureka, Montana, not Eureka yeah, yeah, no, Mountain. Uh, yeah, let's okay. right. <laughs> I mean, you literally could have said like, "Oh, this was in uh, Shit's Creek, Montana." I'd be like, "Oh, yes, yeah, Shit's Creek, Montana." Of course, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And we're not alone. No Americans know about Montana. Even people who live in Montana, they have no clue uh, about Montana. Nobody cares about Montana. Yeah, seems like to a me, nice Montana's place. Montana's always felt like the the most bizarre of all the states. Actually, it, it feels mm-hmm. like it's the one state where it has no nothing. It's known for no particular identity. Whatsoever. I've been yeah. to Montana's the restaurant. That's that's as far as that's I do. Line I mean, Montana's. but think of like like, like Idaho. <laughs> I haven't even been potatoes, to that. Alaska's cold. Hawaii's uh, tropical. I like Montana's. It's it's not it's like good, tropical, uh, like an island. Basic bar food. Florida, you know, Crazy. everything is known for it. Montana is just like fucking. It's Montana. It's Montana. Hannah, Hannah, Montana. So there you checkmate. go. There we go. <laughs> she <laughs> put them on the knows. map. <laughs> Bow to and your queen. Yet that show takes people, place in California, saying, doesn't it? So <laughs> seriously, people are bringing up. <laughs> People are bringing up like Joe Montana and stuff that are named Montana. That's nothing to do with the state <laughs> the can of Montana. Montana. <laughs> like, like... <laughs> it's a great last name, though. It's a great last name. So that's what we got. Uh, uh, Tokyo, Tokyo Hans. Hans. From five five memberships. Thank you so much, Tokyo Hans. Uh, all right. Did you ready? Thank you, Rod Berry, again. <sighs> uh, Tun Boson with a $10 super chat. Thank you so much, Tun Boson. Um, Bowman was recently jacked by uh, Bumas Congress self-proclaimed uh, Zionist and minority leader. Bumass Congress. Jeffries. Oh, Bumass. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, his opponent is backed by former New York governor. What you what you call, call him. him? Are the winds changing? What former is what we what, what's you talking about Cuomo? Oh, so Cuomo endorsed George Latimer, uh, Bowman's opponent. I, I know that Elliot Engel endorsed uh, George Latimer too. He's he's still sour about the oh uh, whooping that he well, got from Jamal Bowman. Bowman. Oh. But it yeah, it, it shows you like whenever they're like whenever they're like oh get in line progressive, they will never ever fucking do the same. Like yep. they're they're just so full of shit. Just it's important to remember <laughs> how full of shit these fucking. Not that I need to. To your point, David. Wild. I mean, Byron Brown. You know, he ran a write-in campaign after India Walton defeated him in a primary, and he won. He yeah. won the write-in campaign. So you're right. They will never, ever, ever get in line or cry unity. They're just you have these bitter losers like Elliot Engel and Hillary Clinton just lingering and yeah. never shutting the fuck up. When we just want that, we want them to go away. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm sorry. This is this is a little bit. This is I, I think this is funny. People are still discussing in the chat what potentially Montana could be known for. No one can come up with anything. And uh, Irma <laughs> Irma Vep said some of Yellowstone is in Montana. I don't know why I thought that was really funny because Yellowstone <laughs> is basically like when you think of Yellowstone the National Park, you do you, at least I do. It's it's mostly in Wyoming. So that's when you think of Wyoming, you think Yellowstone. But it is really funny to me that you would be like, oh, that's where Montana. Yogi Bear goes, right? Some of it. <laughs> yes, yes. But but it would be funny <laughs> for like, oh, yeah, Montana. Some of Yellowstone is in there. That's what it's known as. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There's, there's Glacier National Park, Bighorn Mountains. I mean, never heard huh. of any of those things. <laughs> Huckleberries. I searched up what is Montana known for. Huckleberries is in the top five. <laughs> Oh, I gotta wow. say, Montana is probably the 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 least known or notable. Big state. Sky and mm. Sapphires. There we go. Sweet. Oh, so nothing. <laughs> oh, Jellystone. <laughs> Sorry, it was Jellystone. I'm not Jellystone knocking Montana. Is, is I bet it's a beautiful place. I, I'm sure it's, it seems fun. beautiful. Yeah, like, yeah. The, sure it seems beautiful. beautiful yeah, but we you, you guys gotta you guys you gotta, gotta do gotta something. Put your, put your foot in the sand and say we gotta do something notable. Here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we gotta make Montana known for something. <laughs> yeah. Build a massive skyscraper, ruining the uh, the beauty that is Montana. Oh wait, right. hold on! Someone just mentioned dinosaur bones. I think if I if, correct me if I'm wrong, in the original in in Jurassic Park, the first Jurassic Park movie, Doctor Alan Grant and Ellie are their dinosaur bone dig that the whole movie opens on is in montana wait i thought that was in like jurassic island no the, the no jurassic they go there park. 
is in is in uh, the island off of Costa Rica. The opening of the but, movie. But the opening of the movie where they're doing the dinosaur dig, I believe that's in Montana. Oh, so okay. a fictional dinosaur so bone is what they are known for. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. That's, that's incredible. Uh, okay, we're, all, we're uh, all ignoring this massive super chat here. Who's this I for? know. This is for me, Lizzie. My God. Oh, my God. $50. Do we have a sound bite for that? That's incredible, uh, Lizzie. Oh, I wasn't ready for this. Um, this is truly mental illness. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Lizzie. <laughs> it should have gone to me, I'm telling you. No, uh, I appreciate you, Lizzie, so much. Uh, did anyone cover that moment when someone sent a super chat on TYT's live show asking Anna to reach out to Ole covering the beatdown she gave Adams? Anna refused, calling Ole dishonest for sharing a right-wing video of TYT people using the N-word. Uh, I have not seen this. I haven't followed anything that TYT has done for a really long time because it just kind of upsets me and makes me feel depressed. Um, so, no, I haven't seen this. But, I mean, if Anna thinks that Ole is dishonest, just fact-check everything, everything that she says and... You'll be proven wrong. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to. I don't want to dwell too much on it. It's a big super chat, but like I don't want to instigate any more drama. Especially <laughs> so fifty dollars means you got to create drama. For fifty dollars, no. you have to make drama <laughs> live yeah. right now. Yeah, make it happen. Ole, like, well, we haven't, we some haven't shit seen. Now. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen the video either, but it's, that's depressing. Yeah, yeah. I wish that. I wish that it wasn't the case. I wish that they would try to. Um, Respond in good faith, but I don't. I I've I washed my hands of that situation. Wait, but how yeah. how how could they complain about someone using uh, right wing talking points against them when Anna's literally out there using right wing talking points to attack activists and uh, uh, progressives in local municipalities, all in major cities all over the country with her. Her, her crime rhetoric and all of that. Like she's literally- That's because Binder is pro-crime. She's literally teamed up with mm -hmm. right-wingers who join with her and say, oh, Anna Kasparian's finally getting with it. She's right here. And she'll like retweet them and shit. Like who is oh, she Oh, so you love that? crime, Binder? You love criminals. Yeah, so That's, you love you want them to be I on the street. I heard there's a, there's a guy in New York punching people in the face. That's I was literally that just on air You love saying, that. Maybe you're him. Maybe <laughs> that's you. I was literally, yeah, maybe I was literally, you. Just, <laughs> I was literally <laughs> just on the record saying I was cheering for Bane when he was beating the crap out of the police. <laughs> <laughs> this one's Binder, I think. Um, it is. Uh... John Deere with a super chat. Ole got a great shout out on the UK leftist podcast Trash Future for her Adams interview. They were big fans. Yeah, Trash Future is good. That's awesome. Uh, Asa Rosa, Rosa, excuse me. I'm getting tired. Sorry, $2. Uh, John Stewart should interview Ole. That would be awesome. That would be sweet. I would love to see that. I mean, uh, John Oliver shared a clip of her. So, you know, it's certainly possible. She's got to be on their radar. I yeah, he did. A long time oh, I mean, ago, actually. Oh, a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah. yeah. That. You know, I, I think I think if 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 uh, the if people are able to keep the Ole interview in their minds and like because you know people the, the news cycle moves so quick. Next year is the the mayoral election in New York City, twenty twenty five. She could be someone we see all over the place. Honestly, uh, do, you know, the, she should host that debate. Yeah. That'd be good. Oh, I'm the, sure the, the may, they would not agree to that. Yeah, they they, would, no, it'll never <laughs> they happen. To, they have to agree to the moderators. Not happening. Yeah, That'd be great though. Uh, Jana uh, Blaha, Blaha, thank you for your super chat. Says uh, husband and I vote every election local, etc. We had no idea Tuesday was the presidential primary. There must have been no ads then. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't there usually a lot of ads when that when that comes around? I, I gotta say, I I there was the it was the Tuesday was the primary here in New York. And I, for the first time in my entire life, forgot about it. I, uh, I this I, person I, I think I, is also I, in New York, as they're saying. And go I, I and I yeah. am someone who is in this bubble here. I've been in the political bubble, and mm, I yeah. had planned to go and do say, submit the blank ballot. Um, I, I don't know what it was, but I just totally passed my mind over the first time ever. I've I've voted in every single primary, every single general election whether it be just local races city council races whatever you name it and this i it just completely came and went and i was like holy shit what the fuck 
She says, uh, friends hadn't known either. Yeah, so I guess apparently a lot of New Yorkers had no idea. We are so peeved, thanks. Oh, and let's go Rangers. Let's go Leafs. Go Leafs, go. Uh, Rangers are a good team this year, though. The, so the they, problem, they're definitely... The, the, we'll see. The problem with the New York primary um, was that it, it, it is something to vote for something, even if it's, if it's voting for uncommitted. And in New York City, you had to submit a blank ballot if you wanted to protest the vote. And that just looking back mm -hmm. at it now it just didn't connect the same way like just to show up and submit a blank ballot to me wasn't the same as you know showing up and voting for something specifically and if you look when they announced the result when the results came in in new york there was no like space for this is how many blank ballots were submitted like that, like ninety nine point nine percent of people have no idea what the percentage of blank ballots submitted were. Activists mm -hmm. had to go to the official Bo New York City board, uh, New York Board of Elections website, and go through all the tabs or whatever to find like the delegate votes, and only there did they report how many uh, blank uh, um, uh, ballots were submitted, and they didn't even total it. You had to go to each district and grab how many blank ballots were in each district and then total it yourself. So they really did not want to encourage this, yeah. nor did they want there to be a showcase of how many blank ballots were submitted. And I do think that affected how it stuck in the mind of people too, to get out and, and do that vote. Was was it a primary for both parties, or are they separated? Like some states separate. It was them? both parties, yes, okay. and it was only for the presidential election too, which also is something because I would have probably also remembered if there were other, uh, 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 uh you know, uh, down ballot uh, elections on the ballot, but there weren't. the The primary for everything else is in uh, two or three months. Why do they do that? <laughs> Friends, I, think, I, gotta, yeah. I gotta take I think, off. I, think for I, gotta, I gotta go walk Chico. Hit take care, Chico. Lance. See every hour. Love y'all. See you next week. See you next week. I, I think I think well, I think for this reason th that people will forget about one election or the other. Yeah. Um, Radio friend. Oh, also I wanna say, did anyone uh see that uh, uh Rangers? Because the Rangers were brought up in the last super chat, the Rangers, yeah. uh, Devils, fight. Oh, the, the at the beginning, the line brawl at the very beginning. That's in. That was I was insane. even seeing non hockey people tweet that. I'm like, wow, this even got out to the non hockey people. <laughs> that is insane. I gotta say, I fucking love. There's a there's a clip of someone. There's a reason the for that, by the way. I'll from, tell you why. From from over from overhead. Who had the whole th because the the official broadcast video focused on specific fights yeah yeah so it, it didn't look back. as cool yeah. i mean the commentary makes it for the broadcast video i wish there was commentary over the uh the <laughs> fan video because the commentary makes it for that the broadcast but the actual visual for the fan video is what makes that video they have the overheads you see the entire rink and how insane it is to see all the whole team start fighting there's that visual though the second the puck drops of all the gloves from every player flying. <laughs> yeah. It was so good. It's so crazy. You know, that videos like that. Watching CTE think, like, happen in real time, by the way. <laughs> all, all, like, also, the also I have a few questions. I, I, I used to be a big hockey fan when I was young. It was hockey. Next to soccer, hockey was my favorite sport. Like, the, nice. I was a huge fo hockey fan in 94. When, oh, when they won great range when we had the great rangers team i went to that ticker tape parade when we won i was that big of a fan I, my dad let me skip school we, we were there nice. um that's the rangers i think of when i think of rangers you know yeah. Mark messier jack mm -hmm. boom, boom all those guys um nick kiprios and look, i still remember nice. their names too that's i was how the big biggest of fan of, of uh the ducks actually when i was a kid really because well, the, the movies ducks. yeah 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 um <laughs> So that's no, right. I, I, literally that was like i was really into it you know what though i think i think that was what got me into hockey when i was little and then the rangers being so good was like oh this is my home team I'm this, and they're good i love it this is great mm -hmm. um so two things one in your big hockey fans let me ask you one why is hockey the only sport where this is allowed to happen 
where like like if that if, like, if this if there was to, if there was to be a brawl like that regularly or like or like as part of the game in like the NBA or the NFL or anything like they would shut that shit down immediately. Yeah, I mean that's a better question for the other leagues because the, <laughs> they've never like hockey's always had fighting, right? It's always like it's it's a thing that they're slowly trying to kind of push out of of the sport a little bit at least by emphasizing more on goals less on like there are very few players now that exist purely just to fight like that that used to be a, a a normal thing in the nhl every team had like you know their fighter now it's right. there, there's it's that is not the case anymore except for i mean new york now has this this grandpa kid who's like this guy who's gotten in like fights with like a he's he just joined like the league he's played like on a handful of games maybe like 10 15 games he's gotten like six seven eight fights like it's ridiculous <laughs> like he, fight, he fights every time and and it's it, there's this worry about you know brain damage right because there's been a lot of studies into this and and you know not just hockey but like football like they know this is not good for the brain and actually a couple weeks ago uh two hockey players on the same day uh committed suicide and what? one one definitely so, sorry former hockey players like the, a, a, one of them was was uh definitely like a fighter he, he had he had um he had cte like his family knew that he had like serious brain injury and he this is one of the main uh, you know drawbacks of of fighting in the game and then the other player wasn't as known but uh but he uh, i'm not sure what he was dealing with but this is like this is one of the big issues and that and hockey is still like the Hockey is a great sport. The NHL as a league is run terribly, and they are still trying to deny the connection between fighting and or or between the sport generally and and brain issues, and so they're still trying to push back, you know, against that connection. But in terms of like, it's I'm of two minds because I enjoy, like I'm you know I am human. I am an animal. Like I enjoy <laughs> I enjoy these fights. I enjoy watching them. But I also know they're terrible. They're terrible for the people that are being hit in the head. And if eventually they go they go out of the game, I'll completely understand it. Like it's it's not something that I'm going to necessarily miss because I'll understand why it's gone. But uh, as long as it's I, here, I mean it's here, and they're they're they're, right. they're fighting willingly. Like it, they're, right? they're not being <laughs> yeah, I will enjoy it. They're well, not being like remember, dragged remember into remember it. Right, back, like they want to fight. I, I, right. I remember even when I was watching in the '90s, it wasn't a requirement to wear the helmet, and there were players who preferred not to wear a helmet on the ice. They, yeah, that, that they is a rule now. They have to wear the helmet now. They grandfather. I forget when they grandfathered that in, but but they did grandfather that in. As <laughs> uh, same with the visor. Like uh, the visor is is no is not a requirement. Or sorry, it is a requirement now for new players. But there are still older players like um, Ryan Reeves in the Leafs, who's I think he's like 37, 38. He doesn't have a visor, and he's actually their you know their big fighter on the team. So th there are some guys who who don't wear it because they haven't you know been forced to. But yeah, the they grandfather in certain, you know, rule changes or, or um, you know, changes to protection to ensure that certain players are protected as they join the league. But I'm telling you, this year, these playoffs are great. There's a lot. This is a this is a year where it's a complete toss up. Like there are a lot of really solid teams. Uh, New York's a great team. Uh, Colorado's a great team. Uh, the Edmonton Oilers are a great team. Vancouver's a great team. Winnipeg's a great team. There's actually four solid Canadian teams that have a shot. Uh, I would say Toronto, but I don't want to jinx it. <laughs> Toronto is like up and down. They could be good. They could be bad. Uh, but they're going to be in the playoffs. So it's going, I'm telling you, if you're not a hockey fan yet, uh, find your team. Find, uh, if, if you don't have a home team, no, I don't I'm know. Gonna, pick a team. I'm going to watch uh, this season, it. I think, after seeing that that brawl and hearing that the Rangers are got a good team again. Yeah, they have a good um, team. Are they, are they, are they, are they, I, I, last I heard, because there was that situation where that player got his neck slashed in the UK yeah. with the blade. Are they what? are they gonna institute yeah. are they gonna institute um the 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 neck thing I heard? There's like a neck so, pad or something. Yeah, they gotta switch they're... to roller blades. Like that shit is dangerous. <laughs> well it was it was and a he's complete, not the first player like, for it to happen. He was just the first no. to die from it, I believe. Yeah, so it was like a, been... it was like a freak accident where he was cutting it. Yeah, yeah, it was fucking but terrible. And it usually happens to goalies in the past, I believe. Like there was a so, goalie. The There's goalies a video all, I'll never forget. Like this happened they all in wear the eighties, early nineties. They have the goalies have to wear it now because of this reason. They all they, wear it. The, now. A, a guy was going with the puck and he he fell and his blade hit the goalie right in the neck. Oh. And also because like video the puck of the, 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 the like, goalie, <laughs> right? The goalie ripping off his helmet and blood. Oh my god! I never neck. watched that. And I don't. I don't want to watch. I also didn't didn't watch the recent one because I can't watch it. I'm just like I don't. Like, I don't. I can't watch horror movies. I can't watch fake horror. Yeah. Like, so it's not. 
he lived too, to the goalie. It. The goalie lived thing. Oh, he did? That's good. Yeah. But the yeah, the, the neck protector right now is it's again, it's one of those things where they're exploring the idea. I'm not sure they'll they'll ever mandate it, uh, unless this becomes like a you know, an ongoing issue. But a lot of players since that event happened have added it to their equipment where they are putting it on. And it it's you know, it'd be stupid not to like why like the neck is so exposed why would you not want to just protect right. yourself it, it's not going to impede your play in any way it's on your neck it's fine so hopefully more players do start wearing it because it's right. there's there's so protection. many i honestly people talk about like football being dangerous for their kids or whatever hell i'd rather oh, I'd let hockey's my, the I'd, worst i'd rather let my kid play <laughs> football than hockey yeah i mean yeah no, you got you got sure. the freaking blades on there every player's feet they're skating yeah. around at full speed with a huge ass stick in there. <laughs> well, I will say, I mean, the, the the older you get, like the there's no fighting in hockey, like in kids' hockey. There's no fighting in, in hockey until you get to the, the pro level, right? So you know, the AHL, the NHL, there's there's fighting, but before that, there's no fighting allowed in the game. So that's out of it. That there's a there's a full face mask uh in every league except for again pro leagues. So you know, a lot of that protection is there if a kid's just playing because they, they enjoy the game, they, they enjoy the sport. Um, but yeah, once once you get up to the pro level, there's a little less restriction on you and you're free to, you know, be a little more exposed, I guess. But it's definitely a sport where I, if my kid was on the on the ice in, in the in like the NHL, I would it'd be awesome, but I'd also be really worried <laughs> that he's gonna right. hurt himself because he likely will right. at some point. Every player at some point breaks a bone, like something's gonna happen to them. Like it's, right. they all get hurt. And yeah. my second thing I wanted to say, and you can't answer this one, David. I don't think I don't think any of us can. But I might um, be able with to. everything with every with Mike <laughs> might be able to write. With everything we just said about hockey, how the hell is this not the most popular sport in America? <laughs> it's the most interesting sport. Like I, I, somebody who's I not can, like a sports person, I can tell you what. Hockey is the most interesting sport. The reason is because it's the hardest to pick up and play. A basketball, you need a basketball and a ball. A soccer, soccer ball and a and what? Baseball, you know, a, a glove and a bat. Like hockey, you need a sheet of ice, right? Like unless you're gonna roller, or I mean, you could play street hockey. You gotta but learn it's, to it's, skate. It's not the even same play game. Hockey. Right? Yeah, even like I, I haven't skated in I don't know 15 years. Like I, I'm not, I skating. Uh, I have like I have my feet hurt terribly when I skated, <laughs> so I never really took it up. It never really appealed to me because of that. But it's yeah. There's there's a much a much larger barrier to entry to play the sport, so I think that gets less people into it. But just as a pure, uh, as a, as a viewer, I think hockey is clearly the, the most exciting sport to watch. It's really it's fast. There's a lot more goals now than there was you know back say 15 years ago. They changed the rules a bit, so it allows the puck to move ar around the ice more. Because um, there used to be like two line offside passes, which would always you know stop the game for no stupid fucking reason. So they they took those out. So there are you know stretch passes that often lead to breakaways, and the game's a lot faster, a lot quicker, more goals. Uh, the players are a lot better. Like the 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 technology on the sticks have gotten better. Like the, the shots are insane now. Like how fast they are. <laughs> the the level of of talent on the ice in the NHL is better than it's ever been. Like it is the the sport right now is the best it's ever been. Have it they been able to hard to market the knuckle it puck though? What's the knuckle puck from the Mighty Ducks too? From Mighty Ducks. <laughs> yeah, because if they can't do that, then they can't. They're not. They're well, not on, you know, on par. Hollywood's Hollywood, but I, I feel you like that me? that movie got more people into hockey. At least I, that's literally what got me into <laughs> hockey. I swear to God. And uh, Dom in the chat said that like a straight man can't be masculine on uh, on skates or uh, on rollerblades. Uh, I have a counterpoint for you. I'm going to share you. That's something not true at all. Yeah, I, I have a counterpoint. This is going to change your opinion, Dom. Give me one second, okay? Pull it up. You will uh, eat your words, okay? <laughs> <laughs> this is what the peak male athletic form looks like, and there ain't a fucking thing you can do about it. <laughs> Mic drop. <laughs> that was great. That was smooth. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I hate that Americans love high scoring games because that's why soccer is not more popular here. Soccer is a great sport, too. Yeah. Soccer is it, it super fun to watch. Yeah, it, the you fact don't need that goals one for soccer goal, to be good. Yeah. One goal is it could be it. Like, that's what's yeah. so great. Like, I don't like yeah. the high scoring sports. Like, yeah. to me, like, soccer is super fun to well, watch because of the, the strategy behind it. That's why I have a really hard time getting into basketball, unless it's the playoffs and there's closer games. Like, it, it's just. You know, there's yeah. there's a basket every 
five seconds. <laughs> it's just not the same. The, the, Actually, the, the it most doesn't matter as had, much. The most fun I ever had watching soccer is, uh, uh, excuse me, basketball is my eight year old joined a basketball league for the first time this year. And those, and so, and eight, seven and eight year olds barely score. So it was really fun to watch <laughs> this low score. Like the, the games would end like eight to 12. Like wow. uh, that would be like four quarters, everything. And it was like, they should really televise those games. Seat. That would be, that, every, that would be exciting. Every, because every basket mattered and counted. So yeah. like you were at the edge of your seat every time someone was going to the basket. Maybe, the parents maybe I have a solution for the NBA. Raise the baskets up like 20 feet, 20 feet higher. <laughs> Make it a lot harder to get it in the net. And then we're going to have a low scoring, tough game. And if you get a basket, it's going to be like an amazing feat. And it would be, that would be a more exciting game to watch. This is nah, raise up those even... baskets. Then it's even more so a sport for tall men than it already is. And as a short guy, that's no that's no good for me. <laughs> that's true. I say I say the basket remains at the level it is, but it moves. It moves oh. the oh. uh, I don't mind that uh, idea. Yeah. That's not bad. That's not and bad. shorter it's players, like they get to like there's like a little platform. They can run and jump <laughs> off of that. The taller players, they don't get to use the platform. <laughs> That's not bad. Right. Either. So they could actually dunk. That's the, give yeah, them a chance right. to dunk. That's the, I like that. Yeah, the, the, yeah. There are basketball fans watching us right now screaming at the television. <laughs> Although, like, like, you can be still really talented. Like Muggsy Bogues, he was uh, fairly he's short. He's the one guy and everyone already, really always brings up. He's the one guy, though. Oh, yeah. what do you mean? What he's do you the mean exception to the rule. That's true. What do you mean? But he was so talented, though. Tall man sport. It's, there's Muggsy Bogues, right? One guy. There's been one guy. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. I will say though, the, the Raptors run when they when they won, like that Kawhi Leonard shot, uh, that which, which was in like an earlier round, but like that, like there are some moments like in close games in the playoffs where the NBA is really exciting, really fun to watch, but like you know. During the regular season, right now Raptors are getting fucking destroyed because they're 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 blowing up the team. Like it, it's just not. Why would I watch a game? They're, <laughs> they're just getting killed, and it's it's not fun. But I will say, as little interest as I have about. in sports, I used to play like all those fucking video games. Like I remember, I played. I don't remember what the game was, but there was a Wayne Gretzky game on like Nintendo oh, yeah. sixty four that I Wayne played. Wayne Gretzky three D hockey. I think yeah, I played that, yeah. and then I played NFL Quarterback Club '96 on N64. I played the fuck out of NBA Ballers, and it was so much fun because the way that I won was I would just like foul the players, and they would allow that to just like grab the players and throw them back. <laughs> and it had a really great soundtrack, NBA Ballers. So as much as NBA I'm not, Street, like, NBA Street, NBA Street, NBA Volume Street, One, right? And the, there was Street the Mario one. one. Amazing games. For GameCube. Did you play that yeah, one? I, I never played the Mario one. No, it was oh, good. it was, you'd have this little Mario character jumping and slam dunking with these like real life uh, players. It was, it was amazing. <laughs> it was sounds, amazing. That sounds All right, absurd. now I'm getting, uh, I'm getting, I'm getting shit because people are naming other short basketball players. All right, here we go. Earl Boykins at 5'5". Five, five, I'll give you that. That guy is a short basketball player. So there was another one. But you can't be bringing up Nate Robinson who stood at 5'9". That's maybe a short for basketball guy, but that's still a tall guy. Mike from the Humanist is Report. Five nine, is five nine short, tall? good basketball player. I, I mean, to me, tall, it's tall. Am, to me, it's tall. tall. That guy's got that guy's got about four point five to five inches on me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's that was Sports Corner. On to the next chat. I think this is Matt. Oh, is it? Oh, it is. Radio Friendly Box with a $5 super chat. Ole's interview was like an episode of Hot Ones, and Eric a Adams couldn't handle the heat. He was sweating like he was worried about his browser history. <laughs> <laughs> Emo Dragon, there's, thank you so much. There's two of these. There you go. Uh, Bwood171, $5. Thank you, Bwood. David Dole every week. Name. I can tell by the empty bottle of Corvusor, Corvusor, uh, that it is time to say good night. Is that is that something Cor you drink, David? Corvusier. I feel like that's a word I know. I think I still butcher butchering it. Um, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what that is. I feel like I should. <laughs> I'm so not you a don't huge drink drinker. It, then I have no idea. <laughs> I'm mostly a beer drinker if I drink, but. 
Uh, Emo Dragon, uh, four ninety nine. Thank you so much. Proud to be both a humanist report and Oluranati member. Hey, I appreciate that. There should be a show where she grills guests called Cooking with Ole. That would be amazing. And as she's grilling them, and she she's should also literally cooking. grill the guests. Yeah, she should literally <laughs> grill the guests. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe grill barbecue while. I feel like that would be cool, like a cooking show slash political debate show. Yes, nobody's thought of that, so. You know, I'm thinking about like the that Twilight Zone episode where to serve man, like uh, Ole invites you, where she says she grills her guests, and someone's about to go on Mayor Adams is about to go on Ole's show, and one of his aides runs in and goes, "Mayor Adams, wait, grilling guests? It's a cookbook." <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, Penelope D. Out, $5. Thank you. Emma covered the NJ ballot on MR today. Okay, I have not seen that, so I'll have to uh, I'll have to check it out so I can get the full story. I was focused on my video for tomorrow today, so I'm, I'm not caught up on my political news. Tun Bosin with a super chat. There's a video of Adams called to show me the money. On the New York Senate sen on the New York State Senate floor, as a first-time senator complaining about his salary of seventy nine k. Oh, there's tons of stuff out there, Adams. There's he he had a pull up your pants campaign, and when he was oh, a, a what? Yeah, he he you didn't you never saw this one. Let me. Uh, he had a pull up uh, your pants, pants campaign. The most important as, cause ever. Is it is it as dumb as that bedroom video? Oh, it's. It's popular, uh, it's popular there. knapsack with many different locations. That's one of my favorite. Yeah, who says knapsack? Movie. Like, what was this popular in 1953? <laughs> popular knapsack with many different locations. <laughs> <laughs> so bizarre. I think that your video, David, was the first time that I like watched it that much. Like, I saw tiny little clips here. I, like, I saw uh, the crack pipe part, so but like, I didn't see yeah. that. Play much this on it. the stream. So Play this on the stream. Let me bring it up. Oh, it's not available in my country. <laughs> you have to play it, Mike. Okay. Is this video unavailable? Uploader has not made the available video oh, available. Oh, I have something queued up for later. Somebody brought it up, but let me uh, let me pull this up. Oh God, this is so stupid. I could already tell. I, I oh, I love I love that someone is clearly watching like the stream on delay, and they just put in the chat right now. Montana is beautiful if you're into nature. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm not, so I'm not going to like uh, Montana. I, I hate nature. I love I'm nature. Just I'm just kidding. Uh, okay, this is chat. the... Uh, Stop the sag. Oh, yeah, sorry. Where, where is that? Play the video. Yep. Oh, my God. The 22-foot tall... Wait, it's CBS News. Is this going to be a problem? No, it's This fine. is from like 10 years ago. I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> okay, okay. I play I play CBS close to my channel. Okay. Billboards will feature the backsides of two male models with their pants so low okay. that <laughs> underwear is exposed. Okay. They'll appear in six locations around Brooklyn, primarily in Crown Heights. State Senator Eric Adams unveiled the prototype yesterday. Oh my when God. you raise your pants, you raise your character. When you raise what your pants, a waste you raise of your fucking time. I wish I, I wish I knew of this existence. I would have used this video in my video too. Oh so, apparently the whole sagging pants trend is more than just young people testing the boundaries of society. Senator Adams says it's actually something that started in prison. Interestingly, oh the reaction God. to the campaign seems mixed along gender lines. Guys we spoke to don't like it. My opinion is this is to the individual, you know? Yeah. I think, you know, it's case free closed. Country. People yep. have been walking around with their pants hanging off their behind for years now. Like, and you know, I don't, it never hurt anybody, never bothered anybody. But the ladies right? are all for it. That's good. I don't like the young people with the pants. Talk to an old down. person who uh, <laughs> very clearly <laughs> is going to be like, like, oh, no. I don't like how they look. <laughs> 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 you think it's a good idea? Yeah, I think it's a good idea. They should make it a law. Give out tickets. Arrest Fuck you. Them. Senator Adams. What? what? Arrest, <laughs> arrest them. Arrest them. That's Ole's sister. Just <laughs> setting a good example. It is the responsibility of adults and young adults to set a standard for the youth. This is so fucking stupid. I feel like wow. this guy, like, this guy, like, this guy like, lives to pander to white people up, is how this comes off. Yeah. <laughs> he always like, comes up with like sayings and stuff. Like that one is a Eric Adams classic. When you raise your pants, you raise your character. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's just so like, sure. That, maybe that sounds good on paper. And then you think of it for half of a second. And it doesn't make any fucking sense. 
<laughs> so goddamn stupid. Holy shit. Imagine caring at all about that. Wow. Uh, oh, it's for me. Social lust with a super chat. Invite Dusty Smith whenever possible. That would be good. I, I would like to we'll do that. Him. Mm. Infinite content, $10. Thank you. Uh, Mike, uh, Olaimi must have thought when she was gonna, uh, gonna go on with Eric Adams, some people wait a lifetime. Oh, the Calico. Some people wait a lifetime. Okay, uh, <laughs> give half of this to Olaimi. Okay, we'll do. <laughs> a bit late now. Yeah, it, yeah. Is Infinite Content drunk? Why is Mike spelled with an eight? And it's Eric Adams? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I I wasn't sure if there was like That's any pretty, significance to the eight. But, uh, Mr. Top of New York, I agree. You are the top of New York. Thank you for your twenty dollars super chat, sir. One and zero and uh, two. 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 <laughs> Why aren't more people talking about Project Twenty Twenty Five? Trump is only the far right's vessel to turn government into land into handmaid's tale yeah uh mike has a great video on that i've also yeah. covered that as well in various videos i talk about yeah, it a lot it should be a uh a a topic that's definitely discussed i mean as we get closer to the election i think that for sure uh should be a focus they did i think that they removed the book that you can order like the 900 page document because I think that they realized that people were it gave away to too much about it. yeah so they're like okay we've got to hide <laughs> that shit but it's out there yeah, people downloaded it and they have it, so it's too late. Uh, Otaku Dragon with five dollars, thank you. Uh, uh, aliens would look at us as idiots, killing ourselves. That's true. Between climate change and the religious extremism, they'd say, "I'm not touching that." Yeah, you know, it's it's possible. Maybe they're they're there and they know that we exist, but they're waiting until the last second to intervene because they want to try to have us like help ourselves first before they help us. uh aod fan with a membership super chat hi matt you ever watch the movie ready to rumble also should try to have owen jones on the show yeah That'd that might be, be hard though because he would just we stream when it's like what for the, the middle of the night yeah. yeah it's a lot to ask if someone is that high profile in a different country all right but he's awesome um but yes i i have seen ready to rumble the wcw wrestling movie starring david arquette of course i've seen that movie mm -hmm. Uh, an all-time wrestling classic that led to the made-up match from the movie actually happening in WCW. Yes, how could I forget it? That's very interesting. Uh, Darnell Henry. It's WrestleMania weekend. That's probably why he asked that question. Mm. WrestleMania okay. Weekend. Who's sorry is, to well, but uh, Batman sorry, yeah. is in New Jersey. No, he's not. Gotham is clearly New York City. What? Chicago. What? I what? I mean, they actually filmed. They filmed that in Chicago movie didn't they? in New York City. No, they. In no, fact, that scene, that scene where Batman and Bane battle with the police, um, that was filmed during Occupy Wall Street, just blocks away from Occupy Wall Street. Oh, really? And it was like a news story because also some activists saw all those cops and thought it was gonna. They were coming to crack down Occupy Wall Street. This was back in 2011 at like the height maybe of parts of it were filmed in New York, but I'm reading here. Uh, Chicago serves as a filming location for Gotham City and Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, and The Dark Knight Rises. Well, that hmm. was definitely in New York City. I don't know. I don't know. What were you gonna say, David? You were gonna say something. Oh know, yeah. Oh, uh, what, what's the big what's the big fight in WrestleMania this this weekend? So it's it's a two night event. So there's two main events, one for each night. The main event, night one is Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins versus Roman Reigns and The Rock. That's his right. First match, his first match since he left uh, the last time he came back in 2016. Um, and then night two is Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns for the title in a rematch from last year's WrestleMania. Roman Reigns has been the champion for the past four years i believe undefeated which is very rare in modern wrestling history um usually people don't hold the title for that long aren't they doing it um, to like be beat hulk's record i think i feel like that's kind of like the doesn't yeah, hulk hogan might. hold I the mean, record no the record will never be defeated it was bruno san martino he held the title for 10 years oh my god they're okay. never gonna yeah they're <laughs> never and this was this was back in like the day when 
you know, the WWE would just run Madison Square Garden and like the Northeast. And like, you know, it was, uh, you know, it was built around people coming to see Bruno San Martino. They it wasn't built around people coming to see, you know, the mm. WWE. So mm -hmm. um, it was different then. Um, now they don't have people hold the title that long because yeah. they people come to see the WWE. They can make numerous superstars and make a lot more money than just building it around one guy who could just decide to leave and leave them, you know, in in a, in a tough place. Mm -hmm. So who do you think is going to win that match? Um, the first match night, it's pretty clear because if if the, in that tag team match, if Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins win, Roman Reigns is. Uh, uh, group the bloodline are banned from ringside last year they cost helped cost cody rhodes the match but if the rock and roman reigns win then it's a bloodline rules match which means anything goes including the bloodline can interfere in the match and won't get roman reigns disqualified um it's pretty clear that the rock and roman reigns will win so the next night anything goes in that match and we're going to see i think a lot of interference there's rumors mm. of a Stone Cold Steve Austin surprise appearance because it'll be the 25th anniversary of the first time Stone Cold and The Rock faced off. So people think maybe Stone Cold will come to help Cody Rhodes if The Rock tries to interfere. Shit. Um, I think it's going to be Maybe I'll watch it's this. Gonna be, it's going to be really good. It's $5 on I might Peacock. Actually... That's I mean, it? It comes, with the, it comes with the Peacock subscription. So it's not $5 for WrestleMania either. Oh, Just I'm not sure Peacock... Peacock I don't... I'm hmm. not sure Peacock's even available in Canada. Oh, you might have to subscribe to WWE Network in Canada. But that should only be like 10 bucks for WWE Network in Canada. Isn't that available through like regular pay-per-view things? Yeah, it's like 60 or 70 or 80 oh bucks my God. in there. Jesus Ooh, Christ. yeah. <laughs> so well, definitely just get I a definitely VPN will not steal it. Peacock. I will just watch it legally somewhere. I mean, just there you go. Peacock's five watch bucks it very legally. legally you know? if, if I get it through Peacock, 100%. Like, that's easy. Yeah. All right, where am I here? Uh, oh, uh so we just read that one, yeah. So Ren, thank you for your super chats. Is sending all my cash to Canada tonight. I should have a Canada sound drop. I don't know why. I should have like, oh Canada. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> just drop that every now and then. Uh, Skylar the writer, thank you for your super chat. Says y'all rock. Any advice for wannabe news YouTubers? Just do it. Do yeah, it. don't yeah. do it because just do it because it. you enjoy doing it. it. Do it because right. you enjoy I thought doing about it, it, and you'll you'll find your audience right. if you exactly if you're consistent. I thought about it. it for too long and never got around to doing it till much later than I should have. Right, and so you shouldn't do that. Just do it, and then reach out to other people. Do panels, streams. There's a lot of other streamers out there. Do a lot of cross streams. Just do a lot of work with other people, and you know you'll find an audience. Be consistent and expect there to not be a. A lot of views in the beginning it's a grind at first but if you keep plugging away and you put out quality content you know you'll find an audience it's also easier i think at this point if you have a niche because the True. there's just there's so much out there like where, but if, if you yeah if you have like a specialty yeah. like something that you like that's in your background that you're really that you really are aware of or can speak to then that helps too yeah uh emo dragon thank you for the super chat 499 says tyt main show probably didn't probably my didn't didn't touch on Olay's showdown with Eric Adams because Jenk and I probably sided more with Adams. <laughs> Love your work, mm -hmm. Dave. Well, I, I mean, hard to argue considering some of the stuff right? we've heard about them talking about crime. Yeah. Uh, RJ, RJ Webb in the chat is uh, laughing. He's LOL because I said cross streams. Uh, you should do that too. Uh, cross streams <laughs> with other streamers. Uh, it'll build up that relationship, and you guys will be really close, and you can depend on each other for content. Very right? close. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How do you that's think what, that's Mafia did. started? We all just started <laughs> crossing streams. <laughs> we yeah. had the same joke at the same time. True. <laughs> uh, Asa Rosa with $2. Thank you. Hoping Baron Trump doesn't end up like his father. Uh, yeah, I hope so, too. He seems to be, like, the most normal, aside from Tiffany. Because we haven't heard Trumps. him talk, so we don't That's know. true. <laughs> Hopefully, he sees what his siblings and his father are doing and has some self-awareness and thinks, okay, you know what? I'm just going to I'm gonna chill. I have a ton of wealth coming my way very soon. I'm just going to I'm gonna live my life. Hopefully, he does that. Yeah. Uh, I, heard okay, he sounds I, just, also... I heard he sounds just like his father, though. Have you heard him talk about his height? Mm -mm. He says he's seven foot two... Oh really? <laughs> For a second, I thought you had a real. <laughs> I like, was like still sold after you said it. <laughs> I'm like, 
Wow, what is it with the two? Is it like some fucking dumb fuck accent that's in their genes? He like, is gigantic fuck? though. Is, is is he seven two? He's fucking he's massive. I just huge. made up a yeah. random number. Uh, oh, I think Tony he's near Rizzo is asking asking me. She's a a, a mod in my chat. Uh, too too broke for super chat. Totally fine. But would you ask David what his thoughts are on season two of Shorcy? I have no idea what that is. What is that? I, I don't watch that show. I, I know oh. I should as a Canadian, as a hockey fan, uh, but I just I, I I never got around to it. I hear it's really good though. It's it's like a it's a hockey Canadian sitcom basically. But it, I hear it's like really oh. good. Hmm. Uh, Parker with a super chat. How hype are you for WrestleMania this weekend? One to ten. One through ten. I, I, I'm really hyped. Ten. I think um, uh, may, maybe a nine only because I'm still angry they didn't explain that weird Cody Rhodes, The Rock thing. So basically, if people don't know, um, Cody Rhodes won the Royal Rumble in January, which means he gets to main event WrestleMania. That's been wrestling history for decades. And then shortly after he won the Royal Rumble, uh, and they so they set up Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns for the title, main event of WrestleMania, a rematch from last year. It was set in stone. And The Rock comes back, and Cody Rhodes randomly just says, you know what, because you're back, I'll sit out this year, and I'll let you face Roman Reigns for the title at WrestleMania, because that's what people want to see. Just why would anyone do that? It made no sense. It's clear that the WWE just wrote it in the storyline because they thought the fans would be so delighted that The Rock was back and that's what the fans wanted to see. Well, they were wrong. There was a complete backlash online. There was a We Want Cody campaign. The WWE was being, The Rock turned into a heel while without, like, turned into a bad guy in the eyes of the fans without actually ever doing anything that a bad guy does yet. And so the WWE just nixed the storyline, put Cody Rhodes back in the main event, turned The Rock heel as a sort of explainer as to why, you know, this was going on and why they should hate The Rock. But they never really explained what was going through Cody Rhodes' head for him to just to be like, you can you can do this. So that's bothered me this throughout this whole uh, couple of months of build up to WrestleMania. So I'll give it a nine for hype just for that reason alone. Yeah, sometimes there's like a lack of consistency that can pull you out of it. It's like, mm. yeah. Uh, it's for me, uh, think Rossity, R wait, think Ronicity with a $20 Canadian super chat. That means it's even more than $20 in Whoa. real money, right? That's right. Canadian money. <laughs> <laughs> Canadian money is it's the, the trade off is I get more, right? Uh, but think mm -hmm. Ronicity says uh, it's worth listening to the first 15 minutes of Keith Olbermann's episode, Trump, I will federalize state and local cops, April 3rd, 2024. That's the date of the episode. It is factual. So one's opinion of Keith is not the point. <laughs> he is correct. It can happen on day one. I'll have to check it out. Uh, Kowalski with 999. Thank you so much. Very kind of you, sir. Uh, I've spent the last uh, at six months tracking down Ole's haters for re-education and just as i finally got them all she decided to take on the nypd this could take my nine months to fix i i need a bane mask <laughs> uh the emo dragon with a super chat ian michael ian miles chong's new woke enemy is basic math order of operations Checked out Apes of State based on your recommendation. Good stuff. Keep up the great work. Yeah, Apes of State's a great band. Uh, Apes of the State is a great band. And um, yeah, I saw this. So Ian Miles. I, saw, I have yes, it ready. Is... Okay. I, I've so, been waiting for this shit. He, he, should I read it? Uh, yeah, go ahead. And so Ian Miles Chong tweets, Excuse me, Apple. Why is this calculation wrong? Why is this calculator wrong? When you key in 50 plus 50, and hit the equal key, it'll give you 100. Multiply that by two and you get 200. That's correct. But type in 50 plus 50 times two and it spits out 150. What gives? And he includes a video that shows him inputting this calculation. And this is like, this is this is known as PEMDAS. You learn I love this the like, This is like basic math. You learn this in grade school. That in the order of operations, if if you want to get if you want to do fifty plus fifty and then times that 
those added numbers by two, you got to do 50 plus 50 first and get the, uh, the answer and then times it by two. But if your equation is 50 plus 50 times two all together, then according to the mathematical order of operations, you first multiply the two times 50, which would give you 100, then you add that additional 50, which would give you 150, making Apple's calculator completely correct. And Ian Miles Chang, an idiot. Yeah, it, it's my opinion that the order of operations ought to be simplified like it is in Casio calculators. Uh, he also says that the order of operations is ableist slur. I won't put that up on the screen. So he's coping. He doesn't like the community note. This had me laughing so hard this morning. Like, I, I cannot believe these people. Like, what a fucking I can't, moron. I can't help but think anymore. Anytime I see anything on Twitter from a check mark, I'm thinking, is this simply for engagement because they get paid more? If people are yeah, engaged I with think this. That's yeah. Like, yeah. I that's can't. That's why I usually it's, don't quote tweet them. Yeah. Yeah. Twitter yeah. is so hard to take seriously now because any dumb shit I see, I'm like, this is for engagement, right? I can't, I can't trust this person's actually the stupid. <laughs> I just right. Don't. So I, I just, I don't know. I mean, then again, that guy is a fucking clown. So it's quite possible he's serious. Well, it makes people, it turns them into clowns for clout. Like, there's this, I don't know yeah. the name of the guy, but you might have seen it. There's this right wing Gen Z MAGA figure. And he posted like this photo of himself and he's like, I am alpha, I am pro-Trump. Do you find me attractive? And the photo of him of himself that he shared was the most <laughs> unflattering. Terrible. Like he looks like he looks he's like dead. a cadaver. Yeah, yeah but like he's, a, he's not he's not real, that's right? Not, that's not what he looks like, because he posted photos of himself wearing shirts with slurs on them, racial slurs. So he doesn't like he photoshopped he a himself real to look terrible. I think he's I don't think he's a real person. I think it's just like a, an account to engagement farm. He pays for Twitter Blue. Um, yeah. Oh, somebody says Rick Strokerson. So it's not a real person. Um, it's just like a character. It's so fucking. It's like, like I was Gen Z who looks like he's like fifty. Like he's like a fifty-year-old mixed with like a Gen Z. It's such a weird. Yeah. Person. Yeah. <laughs> like like he can't be a real actually, person. his skin is so white. It's like he looks like he's actually like dead. Like literally. Like I'm. I'm not being hyperbolic. And just his like, features are like the, this. Looks like a fifty-year-old man, but he also does look kind of young. But he looks like he's fifty. It's a really weird looking person yeah I, I don't think he's real uh lizzie bennett thank you so much for the two dollars super chat voted blank on ny primary f genocide joe hell yeah hell yeah glad you did that um tokyo hans with a super chat i really hope they can make jurassic park a reality i could go for some jfc jurassic fried serotonin <laughs> <Ceratosaurus. laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny uh taylor celadonia ten dollar super chat thank you says do y'all f with bad empanada he posts some incredible incredible uh, palestine content and he even confronted pro-israel palestinian and it didn't go well for that guy uh would love y'all to have him on the podcast i gotta That's i've heard this guy's name happened. before i don't know who this per i keep hearing the name i i think i've i've been told who they are and then i forget who they are i don't know who this person <laughs> so I had a debate with Ben Empanada because he got very angry at me. That's when, um, why I recognize it. Yes, yes. yes. Okay. When, um, so when there was that white supremacist shooter who had a, 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 a Latino background and right-wingers were up in arms about how can you call a Latino a white supremacist? And I simply made the point that there's actually a, a historical basis for that. There's actually a history of... Um, you know, neo-Nazis finding refuge in South America, which is true. In fact, literal Nazis, not even just neo-Nazis, from Germany during World War II, after they lost the war, they fled to different South American countries for sanctuary. And some of them were hunted and brought back to Europe for to face to face justice. Uh, he had a problem with me doing that because he called it, uh, he said that I was uh, perpetuating the trope of Argentinian Nazis, which A, there is a trope, but B, there again is a historical fact that Nazis did indeed <laughs> flee to Argentina. I mean, there's a reason also why Argentina is the uh, the whiter of the South American countries and you get all these like, Argentinians with like German last names and such. I mean, it's just, it is what it is. 
I'm not saying our people from Argentina are white supremacists or Nazis. So people of Argentina are mostly good people. I mean, I was cheering for the Argentina Argentina soccer team. I wanted Messi to win. Um, I was just saying that there's a history there where there are some Nazis in South America and that there is a historical reference to white supremacists who have Latino backgrounds. And he uh, didn't like that. And so he debated me. It was just the most one of the more ridiculous debates ever. It wasn't even like debating content. It was just like his opportunity to call me like a discount Sam Cedar or something like that. Like he didn't even refer to me by name. He refused to even put my name in like the title of his stream. He called me discount Sam Cedar. I don't even know why or what that meant. I think he was just mad that he wanted to get on majority report and they never invited him or something. So this was his way to like stick it to us or something. Um, very weird guy. I mean, I've, I've even since that I've liked some of his, like I've actually clicked the like button on some of his, uh, points that he's made on, uh, Israel and Palestine. I don't hold like uh, I'm not going to pretend the guy doesn't have some uh, good points on other issues, but the fact of the matter is he's just an asshole, really. Like, and he hurts himself that way. He's actually lost a lot of uh, hmm. uh, people within the left who probably would have liked him otherwise. He, he hasn't just done it to me, apparently. So um, you know, it is what it is. Hmm. Is this a real super chat? Also, I should mention he's an Australian who moved to Argentina and lives there now. He's not even like a guy who was like born and raised in Argentina and is like fighting for like his, you know, his background or like his, he's a, a weird Australian white guy who moved to Argentina and pretends he's like a legit, like ethnic Argentinian or something like that. Uh, best boomer Vida with a hundred dollar super chat. My God, 99, 99. What Go the hell? cats says uh best boomer of it uh, thank you uh best you have boomer so much more text with a 100 super yeah. chat why am i even here <laughs> <laughs> this is completely unfair tokyo hans with a super chat um mighty ducks movie first step to the dei craze uh true <laughs> you know when when i got into the mighty ducks as a kid i was like maybe in, in second third grade I was really into hockey, uh, like practicing, shooting stuff. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I would just played by myself. But then I started doing like little tricks and then it started to become gayer. And I was like trying to figure skate with the rollerblading. So hockey made me gay a little you bit. It was a that. bit of a gateway. So be careful, I've, folks. Hockey needs a little more of that. That's the one thing hockey's yeah. missing. It's a uh, needs to be a little more gay. <laughs> oh, I'm laughing at this Twitch uh, chat. Uh, this is from Tweakle. Uh, Changing one of my quotes during my Ben and Pinata uh, discussion, uh, Matt Binder quote, some Argentinians, I assume, are good people. <laughs> <laughs> I was, that's so funny, because as you were saying that, I was I was thinking that. I almost, I almost said it, I was like, yeah, I'll leave it. <laughs> yeah, that's actually what I said. I was like, I was like, listen, you were, Argentina you were is not sending that. their best. <laughs> They're sending their messies. They're sending their rapists. Yeah. <laughs> Some I assume are good people. Oh, that's great. Uh, here we go. Oh my God, there's so many. I may have to. I got like three left. Uh, oh, is this for me? Uh, yeah, there's a uh, ton. Mike N with a super chat. Matt, do you think Cody is bringing home the gold? God, I, 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 I don't know how they don't let him win that. Have him win that main event. I, I, I mean, it's so, so clear that he has to win. He lost last year. They've been building this up now then for two years, the whole finish the story slogan where he has to do what his father, Dusty Rhodes, never accomplished in his storied wrestling career, winning mm. the WWE World Championship. They brought the guy in uh, back in after releasing him many years ago as a big star. Um, I mean, would they have him lose and then do it three times next year a third a third times the the charm i don't know but i think it would hurt him if he didn't win it would really hurt his momentum he's got to win you you could easily have him win and let the sort of edge of your seat surprises be like how he wins who interferes what happens how it plays out all right it's 11:40 so i got a i got three left i'm i'm just going to run through my three all right, uh, I got it. Danny, man, I'd love to stay here longer, but you have children. 
and I have a child. How are you awake? <laughs> that was my, my excuse. My excuse is I have a child and you have two. Uh, Danny man, thank you for super chat says, what are the worst games you played as a kid? Like ones you thought was going to be dope, but was absolutely terrible. Mine was tiny tank on Xbox. Um, it depends when kid is like, I feel like when I'm a kid games that were terrible, I probably, I, I liked and didn't realize they were shitty till later on. <laughs> like, like twisted metal three, for example, not a good game, but when I was a kid, I enjoyed twisted metal three. Um, but getting old, like I, I was super hyped for SOCOM three. I love SOCOM one and two SOCOM three terrible they fucking added vehicles ruined the whole fucking game that series was never the same again uh that's probably the biggest disappointment i've had uh but in terms of like just bad games i play i can't think of anything else mine is spice world on ps1 i was really hyped like unironically oh my god i remember it was that so game. bad i forgot yeah. about that game wow it was really bad that's I a never throwback played bad uh bad games i always picked out the best games i only play the best games Oh, we play the best games. <laughs> Tremendous. Uh, Kowalski, nine ninety nine, not quite ninety nine ninety nine, but still, thank you, <laughs> Super Chat. It says in the latest trailer I've seen for the upcoming Civil War movie, the journalist purchased gas with Canadian money, as the USD is worthless. How smug will you Canadians be during U.S. Civil War II? <laughs> oh, that sounds wonderful. I'm going to be using that. I love it. Uh, last one for me is zombie. I think they're all the same. There's three zombies. You all got the same question, apparently. Um, zombie says, don't know why you were arguing over Batman when Shrek is where it is at. They that sent also takes place in New York. The, uh... They sent this three <laughs> times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, the, the magical New York. All right, I got to go. Uh, I'd love to stay for more, but you guys have a lot. to Actually, there's not much more. There's, there's not, not a lot for me, at least. Yeah, but yeah, we'll, we'll make it there's through. Yeah, but pretty quickly. Here, we're going to get, get. I think we were here. So we'll hear Matt talk about wrestling for the next oh. 20 minutes again. Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> the stream just got into extended 20 minutes longer. Well, there's two the nights of WrestleMania. And there's, like, there's like 13 Take matches care, total. Do you want my, you want my predictions for all 13 matches? No, uh, I'm not going to. Can do that. we? Oh my God. There's yeah, been so much wrestling and hockey talk. Adam Christopher. I'm dying. Binder. <laughs> Adam Christopher Alex Binder, what are your WrestleMania 40 predictions? What matches are you looking forward to? I am looking for the whole to forward to the whole Bloodline, Rock, Roman Reigns, Cody Rhodes saga. Uh, uh, Rock and Reigns will win the tag match, but Cody will win the um, the uh, the world title. I think. Uh, I do think we might get a Stone Cold Steve Austin appearance. What else? I think uh, Gunther will retain the Intercontinental Title against Sami Zayn. Um, I do think Logan Paul will retain his Intercontinental title. Oh, oh, not Intercontinental, U.S. title over Randy Orton and um, Kevin Owens. Um, those are probably the main matches. I don't know if we'll see a Damian Priest uh, money in the bank cash in. If we do, it won't be during Reigns, Cody. It'll be at the end of Rollins and McIntyre. Uh, I think Punk will get involved in that somehow from the commentary booth. Um, what else? What else? I think that's the women's matches. I have no idea. Those are gonna. Those are actually the real crapshoots. I have no idea what's gonna happen with the women's, the two women's championships. It could go either way. Um, yeah, that's my. Uh, that's that that, that 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 that's the that's the the the, the my my predictions. All right, you have five gifted subs. Now, thank you, Adam Rice, for the five gifted subs. Awesome. Uh, and I have a super chat from Bwood171, $2. Thank you so much. The Curvoisier quote is an SNL skit. The ladies man. Oh, okay. That would explain why I wasn't sure because I don't I don't watch SNL, so I wasn't uh, familiar with it. But thank you for clarifying. Hold on. People, uh, really quick. People in the chat are shocked because I said Logan Paul. They're going, wait, what? Logan Paul? That Logan Paul? Yes, the YouTuber, the guy who is very annoying online, uh, the one who is notably canceled for his, many years ago for his uh, the Japanese suicide forest video. Oh right, I guess the one who that wasn't the permanent. One who's, uh, the one who was uh, uh, has some crypto scams in his uh, past, not so distant past either. Like just last year, he did one again. Um, he joined the WWE, and unfortunately, I hate to be, be the bearer of bad. Yeah, the guy who's behind the prime drink. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, uh, the uh, but Logan Paul is actually a complete natural when it comes to pro wrestling. 
he's oh. extremely he's extremely good at it. He's so as unlikable as, though. As much as I hate to say it, he is a natural heel. He has a perfect hateable character, and then on top of all that, he is very athletic and is able to do some pretty good stuff in the ring. Um, he has found his calling, hopefully. If he was to drop everything else and just be a pro wrestler, he could complete and maybe still sell the prime drink if he wants to, because that's his real money maker. Um, he could pro potentially become a redeemable person for the rest of his life. Um, so I encourage Logan Paul to continue on this pro wrestling journey and drop everything else Except maybe the prime drink. I, I get it. Doesn't is really hurt anybody. Is Jake so Paul going to be in wrestling drink. too, or is he just going to do all these? No, like... he's actually found success as a boxer. He's going to be. He, he's he's got. He's going to fight a, Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson on convicted Netflix, rapist I mean. versus accused rapist. That's going to be quite the show. Well, has Jake Paul been accused of? I'm pretty sure he's been accused of of a lot. Yeah, as far as I know. The chat can correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, I'm pretty sure that there's been some pretty serious allegations, but. Man, they they're like fucking cockroaches. They won't they won't go away. These two uh, uh, Paul people, like holy fuck, yeah. they're so annoying. Yeah, and the, brought to you by the Disney Channel. That's where they found their original success as young people. Oh, really? I, I thought th that it was uh, Tik or not TikTok, but Vine. I think. I mean, I I mean, I'm. They might have been on Vine, but and then Disney their, Channel. The maybe, beginning huh? of their career was the Disney Channel, if I recall. Oh um, no, I think you're right. Maybe I'm wrong. No, not no, Logan Paul. That's you're not right. Lo no, I'm wrong then. It wasn't. Who's the Disney Channel people I'm thinking of? No, Jake no, Paul was Disney. Jake actually. Paul was Disney Channel. Okay, yeah. Logan Paul wasn't. Logan Paul started okay. with YouTube. I knew. I knew at least okay. one of them was involved with the Disney Channel. Okay. Um. All right. So let's see here. Uh. Here we go. This one's for you. Uh, radio friendly box with a super chat. Eric Adams supporting Atomic Wedgie since 2007. <laughs> uh, that one was for uh, David. Uh, this one is from Tokyo Hans for you. Tokyo Hans, sagging your pants, starting in prison is a myth. It got first popularized in the Hispanic community for copying the dress style of golden age of Mexican film actor Cantin Flas. Oh, I didn't know that. That's interesting. Mm. Uh, next one here uh, from uh, one of your members. Is it? Oh, hold on. Oh, it is Jacqueline Terrell with a membership super chat. Thank you so much, Jacqueline. Um, what was with that scene with The Rock that went viral where the producers told him to stop but kept going and starting beating some guy up? Okay, so this is what's called in wrestling a worked shoot where this is part of the story, this is part of the script, but they pretend that it's a shoot. So a work in wrestling means it's scripted, it's prepared. Um, a shoot in wrestling is the term for like when it gets real, like when wrestlers are doing their scripted match in the ring and someone fucks up and the other guy gets pissed at him and then, and then actually like, you know, gives him a, you know, actually like knees him in the face or something to show that he's pissed at him. That's called a shoot. He's not doing something scripted. It got real. So sometimes they do something called a worked shoot to sort of blur those lines. So that night, The Rock on TV as part of the, the script for television, The Rock will attacked Cody Rhodes, made him bleed. He, what happens is he takes a uh, Cody takes a blade and basically like cuts himself on his forehead to make it look like The Rock opened him up and made him bleed. And so The Rock's beating him up. And that's how that episode of Monday Night Raw ended. However, once the television broadcast ended, they had an idea to continue the storyline for this worked shoot so they could go viral online and make it look real that they have The Rock cut this promo about how he's not going to stop for the TV cameras and he kept beating up on Cody Rhodes after the, you know, for so the social media stuff after the TV uh, uh, production ended. And, you know, The Rock is cursing, something they couldn't do on TV. Rock is saying, fuck that. I'm not stopping just because the cameras, the, the broadcast ended, just because the camera stopped. Fuck that. It's called a work shoot. It was just exactly for that reason, to make people who don't know this stuff or just casual fans to question like, whoa, that's crazy. This really happened. This is real. It's clever. It's clever, right? But it's all part of the storyline. It's all part of everything. Interesting. 
Uh, okay, we've got uh, this one for you. Or no, 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 I'm sorry. This was uh, David Dole. Let me skip to the next one. This is uh, for me, Chris Corcoran, $5. Thank you so much. Fetterman is the real big, stupid, ugly ogre we were warned about in the first Shrek movie. Yeah, that's true. He is a really twisted person. His tweet today, um, he just like, he said, I forgot what he shared, but then he just said, no conditions to Israel. He's, sick, he's a sick, sadistic fuck. I think that was my response to him because he, like, honestly, seemingly enjoys the destruction. Like, he just, he, he rebels in it. It's really, he's a gross person. Uh, Darnell Henriquez with 199. Thank you so much. Gotham is set in New Jersey in the comics. Really? This is mind blowing to me. Everything I've ever heard about Batman is that Gotham is supposed to be New York City. I mean, I, yeah, maybe, I would have maybe maybe, maybe there thought. was. There's a lot of different universes in comics. There's every every superhero has multiverses, different comics. So maybe in one of them it was in New Jersey. I have no idea. Uh, okay, so we got this one, uh, one for each of us. Thank you, Zombie. Appreciate that for me and you, uh, Matt as well. Uh, and then this one's for you. Um. Uh. Wait, hold on. I think you you skipped one. Did I? Best bo best boomer vida. Isn't that this one? I'll read this one. Best boomer vida with a five dollars super chat. Doctor Shiva for twenty twenty four. I'm assuming this is a joke because Doctor Shiva is that crazy right winger uh, who claims he invented email um, and he runs oh. for president every now and then. Yeah, uh, but best boomer vida sent one earlier. Oh, uh, right, after, it, right after this the, one, right? The memberships. Yeah, so Best Boomer oh, okay. Vida sent me. This was a, Sorry, another $100 super chat. My this God. is the second $100 super chat Best Boomer Vida sent today. Best Boomer, what the Thank hell? You, That's Best crazy. Boomer. Uh, and then on top of that, he sent that Dr. Shiva <laughs> comment, which I hope <laughs> right. is a But um, Best Boomer Vida says, uh, what do you guys do for work during daytime hours? I will answer that. But um, after your two separate $100 super chats. I also have to pose that question to you, Best Boomer Vida. Yeah, what you right. Do for work. <laughs> no kidding. Uh, uh, but I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I, everyone knows what I do. I, I'm quite clear. I talk about it a lot because a lot of times my work becomes part of the, uh, uh, the topic of conversation. I'm a full-time uh, journalist with uh, Mashable, uh, the uh, tech and digital culture uh, website. Um, that's my full-time job, it pays me a salary, healthcare, all that. Um, I would love for this to be, and maybe one day this could be, but not quite there yet. Not, not really close, but I also don't want to put, put it down either. Um, you know, if this was me maybe 10, 15 years ago before I had kids, uh, I could possibly potentially pull off of, uh, uh, living off strictly off of, the podcast, the Patreon, the YouTube, the Twitch, my majority report appearances, all the other little side things I do, all that combined could potentially have sustained a Matt Binder uh, living in the early 2010s, paying for a small studio slash technically one bedroom, even though it was really a studio size. And um, my wife was also working that could have the amount I make from that could have sustained me then with all that combined, but now, as the uh, sole provider, you know, wife takes care of the kids because they, you know, they come home from school and I'm still working, uh, um, you know, and as someone who has two kids and no longer lives in a small uh, uh, studio, uh, you know, I th it's not enough now, but maybe one day. So there, mm -hmm. I gave you a really detailed explanation of what I do for a living and what my financial situation is. I'm also not rolling in the dough either. I very much live, we very much live uh, paycheck to paycheck. Yeah, I do this full time. Uh, Humanist Report is my uh, main job. So I am uh, I'm very grateful. Um, okay. And I think David Dole also does this full time as, as, mm -hmm. as well as Lance, Lance, right? Yeah, I want to say yeah. Damn, yeah, you, very, guys very in, you guys live in my dream. <laughs> All three of you. <laughs> uh, okay, let me see where we're at. Uh, okay, so I think it's this one. Uh, Bay Photo sends in one ninety nine. Thank you, Bay Photo. PEMDAS in bio. I like that. Uh, this one's for you. Um, 
Kowalski with a $10 super chat. NYC is too safe. I was there in January, 2023 and was fairly disappointed. I wanted to battle maniacs in the subway, cocaine goons on wall street, confront Italians, <laughs> no fun. <laughs> Good food though, but mid pizza. I will pretend you didn't say that last one. But also, you could you could still find the cocaine goons on Wall Street. Those are definitely still there. <laughs> mm, that's true. I think this one's for you too. Uh, Mike and with a super chat. What do you think of L.A. Night? Um, I'm uh, listen. I I always give props to these guys. I respect every one of these wrestlers tremendously. It is one of the most insane unique jobs on the planet there's no job security even when you get to the big leagues wwe all these guys who work for wwe are independent contractors even though wwe basically controls their schedule and everything they do uh it's a very wishy-washy area um i'm surprised you know the government hasn't gotten involved or i'm surprised really the the most obvious thing to me is sag after getting involved and um making these guys uh fighting for these guys to join their union um, cause they are TV stars essentially. Um, mm -hmm. but, um, LA night, super happy to see a guy who was been, who's been at it for decades. Finally in his early forties, hit the, hit it big and find his niche. Um, he, he found a character that finally fit the WWE fans are behind him. He's this whole yeah thing. Um, doesn't do it for me. He, he feels too much like uh, uh, just a combination of a bunch of guys from the 90s. Um, but that's just my opinion and why what, what I don't like. I fully support the guy. I wish him the very best in his career. Um, in his match with AJ Styles, though, um, you know what? I would root for LA, LA Knight to win just because he could use the rub more than AJ Styles. That win for AJ wouldn't do anything. That win for LA Knight would get him further in his career. So, you know what? I would root for LA Knight, even though I'm not a big fan of his character. Okay, last but not least, we have Tokyo Hans with 1,000 yen. Now that the Canadians are out of here, thought I'd show you some support too. <laughs> Thank you, Tokyo. I appreciate that. Uh, well, that's, that's all. Do you have anything on Twitch, Matt, that you need to shout out? Oh, yeah. Let me check it out. Um, not much, but we got one. Uh, Ponderosa Pine over on Twitch. Uh, resubscribe for one month at tier one. Subscriber for 27 months. Oh my, my goodness. God. Thank you so much, Ponderosa Pine. Um, really appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, that's, we did it. We did it. Uh, who do we want to read we, today? We started the Super Chats super early today, too. Not super early, but much earlier than we usually do. Usually we start at 10.30. We started like 10 after 10, which we've never done before. And still we've managed to almost go three and a half hours and end the show at midnight. What is wrong with us, Mike? What are we doing? <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm tired, I, too, but I'm, st I'm just like, I'm sticking it out. I can't complain though, because I actually really enjoy doing the super chat questions. Because you do guys too. make it fun, honestly. I like the questions, no matter what they are, whether they're politics or pro wrestling or pop culture or whatever. It's I enjoy it, so that's why I stick it out and stay. Yeah, um, it's a great distraction from like stuff. also the money's nice too. But <laughs> 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 um, but uh, who should we raid on Twitch? Let's see. There's. Who's on. There's a bunch of people. There's actual Jake, Conyer, uh, Trihex, Carter, Ravana, uh, Doodleburb. There is Prime K. There's a lot of people on. So does anyone uh, have a recommendation? A, a super chat just came in last minute really quick. Zombie says, have you ever considered bringing on Midas Touch, David Pakman, Brian Cohen, Jesse Dolermore, et cetera? I would have on all those people. Yeah, I would um, too, for sure. Um, you know, Midas Touch is a little bit more i didn't know the people than behind them it, i don't know the personalities i just know like the uh the website the name of the company right I mean, yeah a little yeah bit normally democrat for us but you know what they could be a good guest to have on to the lead up um to the uh, you know the election you know maybe a little friendly debate about biden um mm -hmm. from people who are obviously not you know uh, you know it could be a friendly debate um pacman i would have him on he's probably too big to come on here though same Brian with Brian, Cohen. yeah. They're, yeah, yeah I would have him on, though, too. But they're, these are really big uh, 
accounts. Jesse Dolermore. Who? Why does that name sound familiar? He's also like, um, he's pretty big. I think he has like a million subscribers or something. He does. Uh, oh. Yeah, he, he's kind of more like a uh, social dem. Uh, really nice guy. He might I, come on. I'd have him all on. Yeah, and I'd, I'd have he's all of them He's around the on. same subscriber as like you and David. He's a little bit more. He's not too much more than Oh, is he? Oh, okay, okay. He yeah, he seems like a nice 000. guy. Oh, okay, that's pretty good. He seems like a really nice guy. I've only had positive interactions with him, I think, on like Twitter and stuff. But yeah, it seems nice. Um, okay. Um, yeah. What do you all want to? Uh, what do you all want us to do? I know that I'm asking mostly the YouTube audience because we have a very small Twitch audience. But who should we raid? Who uh, you all say. I see. As for who's on right now, I see Kanye is on. I see Hamozi Goat is on. Um, I see. We should do Kanye because I don't think we've ever raided Kanye. Um, Rayvon is on. Oh, no, I think Rayvon is just cross cross streaming. Here I go again. Uh, Dan from the web. Oh, um, okay. But um, we we did Dan from the web last time, so we could do something different. Um, yeah, let's do. Let's try to. I do. Uh, send them over to to, to Kanye. Let's see. What, yeah, what are let's people in the Ka chat saying? Any any suggestions from people who maybe I'm not following? Uh, I see Ravana and Lotta Glotz. Who's I, I've never Lotta heard of Lotta Glotz. Who's that? How's that I'm spelled? Sure. I don't even see that. It is L O T T A G L O T S. I'm not sure who that is. Um, let's do let's 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 raid Kanye. Okay. Um, let me pull that up. Hold on. It's Kanye C C. Kanye C C. Yep. Yeah, C O N U R E C C. All right, here we go. I'm gonna start the raid. Uh, I'm clicking that start raid button, and I'm gonna say. Uh, Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Uh, Leftist Mafia, we'll see you all next week. Yeah. It's been a great show. Thank you all for watching. All right.